Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the 2023 Pulse Bar of Spring Week Lecture Series. I will be your host for today's session. My name is Shelo and Pavelia. Before we officially begin, let me give you a quick summary on what this event is all about. This is the Bar Ops 2023 Free Week, a discussion on the frequently asked topics on the eight bar subjects. This is actually an exclusive project of the Philippine Association of Law Schools, or PALS, and the Rex Education. We have been conducting these free week lectures in the past few days, so if ever you have missed a, a few of our lectures, you can head over to the Facebook pages of the Philippine Association of Law Schools, or PALS, and Rex Education to view all the videos available there. We also encourage everyone to please like, subscribe and follow the pages of Pulse and Rex Education so you can be updated on the upcoming discussions and programs. For some house rules during our lecture, I would also like to remind everyone that throughout our three-hour lecture for today, kindly refrain from recording or reproducing our discussions and lectures for any personal gain. Again, everyone can view anytime our lectures and discussions through the Facebook pages of Pulse and Rex Education. Also, if you have questions during the lecture, you may comment it already through our FB Live comment section, and we will entertain them at the end of the discussion during our Q&A portion. So I know I've said pretty much everything. So without further ado, let me introduce our speaker for today for our pre-week lecture on criminal law. Our speaker earned his Master of Laws degree from the San Sebastian College Ricoletos College of Law in the year 2014, where he was conferred with Benemeritus, an honor status equivalent to Magna Cum Laude. He also earned his degree in Bachelor of Laws from the same college. Prior to law school, he finished his bachelor's degree in psychology and earned units in the program Master in Psychology at the University of Santo Tomas. He is the author also of several law books, namely The Alternative Dispute Resolution and the Arbitrary Arbitration Law, Bar Review Guide to Criminal Law and Insight to the Bar Exams, uh, Special Proceedings of Foresight to the Bar Exam, and also we have Special Penal Laws Criminal Law Reviewer Volume 1 and 2 of Foresight to the Bar Exam series. He is also a professor of law, teaching foundation and review subjects in criminal law as well as remedial law, and he is also an MCLE and Bar Review Lecturer. Our speaker for today has been serving as the Dean of the Polytechnic University of the Philippines College of Law for more than 11 years now and has been rendering service as the Director of the PUP Bar Review Center or PBRC and the Refreshers Enhancement Capacity Program or RECA. He is also a member of the Board of Trustees of the Philippine Judicial Academy. Currently, he is the President of the Philippine Association of Law Schools and has served as such since 2021. Everyone, let us all please welcome Dean Gemi Lito L. Festin. Dean, the floor is yours now. Yeah, thank you, Shelo, and good day, everyone. Um, you are so near to your dream, no? So keep the faith. We have a saying at PUP that if you stay close, stay close to God, you will stay closer to your dream. Why? Because he's the one who gave you that inspiration and he planted that dream into your heart. So fight for your dream. I know you'll be able to make it. Okay. So allow me to share screen uh, first. Okay. My approach is not uh, by codal provision, no. Uh, my approach is more on how it is how the question, especially the essay type of a question, is presented in the bar examination, and how and how you will tackle that problem, no. So usually, 
Okay, there are simple. This the first one is just a simple uh, question as in the bar. Sa essay type of a question to, no? Pag sinabing what crime did A commit? So it's uh between A the offender versus X the offended party. So you, all you have to do is just to check first who is A and what are the acts that he committed uh, and as against X. Sino ba si X? Or medyo hindi naman complicated but uh, additional offenders. What are the crimes committed by A and B as against X? So you have to analyze also the, uh, not only the elements of the crime but who are these uh, people involved? Bawa si A is A and B no, uh, conspired to kill X. Si A is the son of X. Father niya si X. Si B is just the best friend of A. So, they, they conspired and in fact, they killed X. So, what are the crime or crimes committed by A and B? A would be liable for parricide. Why? Because of that uh, relationship with X. Siya yung son ni X, right? And B will be liable for murder because uh, B is not related by blood no? with, uh, against, against uh, X. So two different crimes, no? but the same act committed. So we have to be very careful. No? And um, mahirap is that there are several offenders as against several offended party or victims no so that will be ca si as against b uh, a b and c the offenders versus x y and z the uh, victims tingnan niyo si a si a ba ay uh, baka naman si a is a minor is only 12 years old so he's not uh, criminally liable there is a crime committed, but it's not criminally, criminally liable because that exempting circumstance of minority would apply to A. Si B, baka ginamit niya yung ano, uh, he abused his public position in order to commit the crime. So magkakaroon pa ng aggravating circumstance yun. What about the victims, X, Y, and Z? X is a public officer. So in addition to the act committed, uh, the fact that he's, uh, he, uh, he was killed because he's a public officer, uh, may, may, the crime would be, uh, perhaps be a complex crime of direct assault with murder. No? So, CY could be a minor, so pwede mag child abuse. And X, so titignan nyo lahat. Um, in a bar problem, essay type of a question, he, it's seldom they ask for uh, book one, book two, and SPL. Minsan, no, magkaka magkakasama na sila sa lahat ng isang bar problem. Ikaw na lang magdadaisek. No? Uh, in, a, in a particular essay type of a question, andun na yung answers that will be from book one, uh, book two, as well as SPL. Like for example, A committed the crime of uh, A um, committed the crime of uh, frustrated homicide. No, frustrated homicide. So I explain. Why frustrated? Yan, no stages of execution. Galing yan sa ano? Uh, galing yan sa book one. No. Tapos, homicide. Bakit homicide? Hindi murder. Eh, you know that uh, there's only a fine uh, hairline difference between homicide and uh, murder. Like, pareho silang may intent to kill except that in murder, there's a presence of qualifying aggravating circumstance. No? So, yun. And could be, A could be a principal and B could be an accomplice as well. So, labo-labo na sila. No? Okay. Okay, so and this is actually the map, no? This is the map. Okay? In answering essay type of questions, though, consider the following. Tignan mo pag-aralan mo. 
Baka naman no crime is committed. No, bakit no crime is committed? Number one, justifying yun eh. That's a justifying circumstance. Uh, you know, the difference between justifying and accepting. In both instances, so justifying no, and accepting walang uh, criminal liability. But in justifying, the act is deemed to be in accordance with law. No? Um, sa exempting, there is a crime but there is no criminal liability because of the absence of uh, any of the elements of uh, voluntariness. Walang freedom, walang intelligence. No? So justifying, uh, well, related to the justifying is the case of people versus actual, a mistake of fact. Or is it, or, or is it under the uh, vowsi, no? He, she is deemed to be a battered woman, no? woman, no? Under the uh, battered women syndrome, no? Or principles na nulim krimen, nula puhe na sinilehe. There's no crime when there is no law punishing the same. Or theory of absorption, no? Rebellion absorbs common crimes in, for as long as it has political complexities or in furtherance of rebellion. Or you check on the characteristics and limitations of criminal law. No? Or it's an absolutory cause, no? like instigation and not entrapment. Now, kakambal do sa tanong would be yung stages of execution. So you will have to explain consummated ba yan, kung merong crime, no? frustrated ba yan, or attempted ba yan. And of course, check on the elements of a crime. Dolo ba yan? Kulpa? Or a special penal law? And take note, when you study, when you uh, ano, uh, consider things, no, think about uh, crimes which are similar but not identical. May ma- there are specific crimes in the RPC which are similar but not identical. One of one that I did mention a while ago would be homicide at murder. Diba? Oh, pwedeng malversation versus estafa. Or pwedeng RPC versus uh, SPL. Hairline difference, no? Like estafa versus uh, estafa through issuance of a postdated check as against uh, BP to violation of BP-22. Okay? So titingnan yun. Or it could fall under complex crime when there are two or more grave or less grave felonies, no, committed uh, by virtue of a single act, no, produced by a single act. O kaya naman ay it is a necessary means. Or okay, let's go specifically. No, no crime is committed. No, no crime is committed. Justifying. And exempting uh, circumstances. Okay. Uh, let me use the whiteboard. Yeah. La. Justifying the shadow of a gun. Just, I sorry. Justifying from that of exempting. No criminal liability. But the reasons are different. Bakit no criminal liability is justifying? It's because the act is to be done in accordance with law. No, So it's uh, deemed to be lawful. So exempting... No, uh, there is a crime, but no criminal liability because of the absence of any of the elements of voluntariness. Of ng voluntariness, which is freedom or intent, uh, intelligence. And intent. Tanggalin mo ang freedom. 
like if there is irresistible force. Okay? So, walang criminal liability because, no, uh, walang freedom. No, he's just uh, reduced into being a mere instrument. No, intelligence, no, a 12-year-old child who killed and stabbed his classmate. His classmate died. Okay? Uh, is there a crime committed? Yes. Is there criminal liability? No, because of the absence of intelligence. Okay? So, baka naman, uh, it will fall under justifying and exempting circumstances. Now, under justifying. So, justifying thing then, yo, like, uh, well, ang common dyan is self-defense, defense of relatives, defense of uh, strangers. Oh, pare-pareho sila except unlawful aggression, reasonable necessity of the means employed, no? lack of sufficient provocation on the part of the uh, person defending himself. It could be also that there's self-defense uh, of relatives. Same, except that in case the provocation was given by the person attacked, the person defending, and no part therein, and defense of relative of strangers, the same. Uh, first two, except that he is not induced by revenge, resentment, or evil motive. So, tatanda yung tatlo na yon. Okay, so who are the relatives? Apat, uh, alam, memorize yun, no? Uh, spouse, ascendants, descendants, legitimate, natural, adopted brothers or sisters, relatives uh, uh, by affinity within the same degree, and relatives by consanguinity within the fourth civil degree. Okay, so yun, uh, that will be your first cousin. So kung all are present, yun, walang criminal liability. So, te-check nyo lang, no? Merong, merong bang unlawful aggression? But same element sila tatlo. No? Ano bang unlawful aggression? This was asked previously in the bar examination. Different kinds of unlawful aggression, merong palang ganon. No, pero it's only actual or imminent. Imminent is at the point of happening, no? So remember that in a lawful aggression, hindi yan hindi yan based on conjectures, surmises, or mass or suspicion, no? So imminent, there is already a actual or imminent threat to one's life, limb, or property. So kung wala nang threat sa buhay ng isang tao, there could be no unlawful aggression. So kung ilang bawa ay uh, si uh, a uh, attack B, no, with a knife, and A was able to parry. Uh, B was able to parry the attack, and A already ran away. But in this case, B followed after him. So in this and killed A. So the first one, okay, C A is the aggressor. No, huh? pero sa second one, it will be the B who is the aggressor. Why? Because at this point in time, when uh, A ran away, wala nang threat to his life. There's no more unlawful aggression. Okay, so remember that. But if these three are present, no, then uh, there is no criminal liability. No. Now, in exempting circumstances, no, like uh, I cannot uh, go in each and every one. No? Exempting would be. Uh, uh, insanity, no, will be one. Uh, imbecility is always exempting, no. Insanity, except during lucid interval when he knows the consequences of his act. So tatandaan yon, no. Or kung merong irresistible force, no. Uh, exempting circumstance din yan. Okay, so check nyo, no. O baka naman, uh, it is because of a uh, mistake of fact as exemplified in the case of Achong. Ano bang mistake of fact? If this is not mistake in identity. Though sa mistake in identity, there is criminal liability. 
sa mistake of fact, walang criminal liability to, no? Achong was exempt was uh, acquitted by the Supreme Court by raising these uh, three, no? Pre requisites of mistake of fact. A, I and without W. The act would have been lawful had the facts been as the accused believe it to be. His act would have been lawful had the facts been as the accused believe it to be. Uh, remember the case of Achong, somebody was banging on his door. He thought that it was an intruder and ju because during this time, prevalent among the crimes within, within the area. So thinking that there was a threat in his life, so uh, and the, the the door kept uh, on banging. No, the 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 the, of, the person kept on banging on the door. So, uh, fearful for his life. No, in his mind, uh, his life is endangered. He stabbed this person. It turned out that it was his best friend, his friend, roommate. No, who played jokes on him. So, ang tanong niyan, yung act of stabbing uh, at Chong. No, kung tunay na intruder siya, would would it be lawful? Yes. No. So that's the first element. His act would have been lawful had the facts been as the accused believe it to be. His intent is also lawful. Why? Because he acted no, under the instinct of self-preservation. And W is without any carelessness on his part or without any negligence. How was it shown? He verified. No? When, when, when that person was banging on the door, sabi niya, who are you? Unfortunately, no, the question left was left unanswered. So, kaya, ang uh, ginawa niya is just to, in his mind, is to protect himself. If these three are present, then there is no criminal liability. So, battered women syndrome under the Bausi. No, uh, Sabi ng batas, and we will discuss this later on, there's no criminal liability, no? Uh, if a person is found to be suffering from a battered women's syndrome, there is no civil nor criminal liability, notwithstanding the absence of the element of the justifying circumstance of self-defense. So kahit walang unlawful aggression, ha, pagka battered women's syndrome, Kahit natutulog yung dati yung asawa niya, pinatay niya. Pero if she's found to be uh, suffering from a battered women's syndrome, then there is no criminal liability. So it has, but for a person to be uh, deemed as a battered woman, dapat merong nag-underwent ng three phases at two cycles dito. No? So yun. Three phases. TAT. Tension building, acute battering, and tranquil loving. So, kung um, tension building, this is where the minor, minor battering occurs, whether it's verbal or physical. Acute battering is already characterized by brutality and even death. Then, tranquil loving period, this is where the man would ask the woman forgiveness and she would forgive no uh, thinking that he will change eventually okay and then dalawang cycle so una nagbumalik ulit sa tension building nagkaroon ulit ng acute battering and tranquil loving so two cycles three phases no uh, she's deemed to be suffering from a battered women syndrome pag wala ito sa bar pag isang phase lang hindi siya suffering from a battered women syndrome Pag walang tranquil loving period na binigay sa, sa facts of the case, then walang uh, battered women's syndrome. So dapat tahanapin nyo to. Pag present in to, itong dalawa, no civil as well as no criminal liability. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, remember that. Okay, let's go back to... So justifying, as I've said, I explained already that and uh, exempting, okay, like minority, insanity. So minority is not always exempting. 
Pag 15, Juvenile Justice Welfare Act. Pag 15 or below, absolutely no criminal liability. Pero kung ang edad is above 15, below 18, then you qualify. Tapat no discernment. If no discernment, it's an exempt thing. If he is above 15, below 18, acting with discernment, it's not exempt thing. It's already a mitigating circumstance, a privilege mitigating. So what is the meaning now of discernment? He knows the consequences of his law as act. He knows what is right and he knows what is wrong. Okay. Or principles. No? Principles. Nulim, nulum krimen, nula puena sine lehe. Walang common crimes in the Philippines. No? Kung, uh, kasi we follow this principle. There is no crime when there is no law punishing the same. There is no crime when there is no law punishing the same. Oh, example, misprision of treason. No? Ano bang ang, ang treason? Una-una, this is a breach of allegiance. No? So for the person owing allegiance to the republic, to the state, sino ba nag na allegiance sa state? Una-una ay yung Filipino citizen. Pangalawa, resident alien who owes temporary allegiance no so kung ini breach nila yung ano, allegiance nila they can be liable for treason and how is treason committed by levying war or adherence to the enemy okay ano naman yung misprision of treason misprision of treason may be committed by a filipino citizen only no who has knowledge alam niya anong knowledge niya conspiracy to commit treason and he failed to disclose it to the proper authority. Okay. So, ito, meron siyang knowledge ng, mis ng uh, conspiracy to commit rebellion. Taking arms against the government. Okay. So, hindi siya treason. Though he failed to disclose conspiracy to commit rebellion. So, ang tanong, is he liable? Meron bang batas ng misprision of rebellion? Wala. No? Treason meron. Misprision of treason uh, of rebellion and uh, who has somebody who has uh, a Filipino citizen who has a knowledge of conspiracy to commit rebellion and he failed to disclose the same. There is no law that punishes the same. So he is not criminally liable. No? So tatandaan 'yon. There is no crime kung wala namang law that punishes the act. Okay, theory of absorption. Sa rebellion, di ba? Sa rebellion, rebellion lang ang crime committed. Eh, paano kung may kasabang uh, uh, common crimes such as murder or homicide, pabatay sila ng mga tao? No? Those, those common crimes which were committed in furtherance of rebellion, no, it has political complexities it is already absorbed only in the crime of rebellion. So, wala na yung mga common crimes na yun. No? O, tatandaan nyo. O, tingnan nyo rin yung characteristics of criminal law. No? Uh, generality principle. No? Kung yan ay ang nag-commit ng crime ay ambassador ng isang foreign country, eh, under the general, generality principle, wala silang criminal liability. No? Exempted sila. Okay, territoriality. No? The crime was committed outside the Philippine territory. No? Or kaya ay prospectivity. Binagyan ng retroactive application. Hindi naman favorable sa, sa, sa accused. No? I'm sorry, no? nakalagay due process, ex post facto law, bill of attender. Ito yung mga ano. Uh, specifically, yung mga constitutional limitations. Okay. So again, allow me to share screen. So whiteboard, guide me tayo whiteboard. Pag sinabing uh, generality, it refers to persons. Kaya pag tinanong kayo sa bal, start with all persons, you're safe. All persons who live 
or sojourn in the country, no, are subject to Philippine laws. So, um, kahit na ikaw ay uh, Amerikano, in your own state, Lubao, New York, it's perfectly allowed. Uh, the state perfectly allowed to 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 possess to use marijuana. Tapos pumunta ka ng Pilipino stating, oh, uh, under my nationality principle, uh, under my nationality uh, rule, no, is that it's perf uh, I'm it's perfectly legal to use and carry marijuana. Okay, so is the contention correct or not? No, because of course in general generality rule. Lahat ng tao na sa Pilipinas subject to our criminal law except kung magfo-fall ka dito. No? Uh, loss of preferential application. Loss of preferential application katulad ng uh, sinasabi ng public international law. Certain persons are exempted like sovereigns, ambassadors, ministers, plenipotentiary, Ministers, residents, and charge the affairs. Ang consul is not included. So kung tat, eto, magfo, kung eto ang gumawa ng krimen, no, you cannot prosecute them because ano, of laws of preferential application. Preferential application, and ano yung ibig sabihin? It gives preference to a particular class of person such that if you uh, belong to that class of person, then uh, you cannot be prosecuted here. No? The, so that's uh, number one. And of course, kung meron treaty. Like tayo, we treat BFA, visiting forces, no? As a treaty. So yung uh, a U.S. military personnel who committed a crime against another fellow U.S. military personnel not be prosecuted in the Philippines. No? Sa bansa nila. So titingnan nyo yun. Ha? Pero pag ang... Uh, ang uh, the U.S. military personnel commits a crime against a Filipino civilian. Uh, hindi mag-apply ito. No, it can be prosecuted in the Philippines. Okay. Uh, generality, territoriality. Territoriality refers to a place. Lugar yan. So, a general rule is that uh, uh, so it's within the territory, no? Place or territory. So the rule is all crimes committed within the Philippine territory, Philippine courts have jurisdiction to try the case. So if it's if the crime is committed outside the Philippine territory, then Philippine courts have no jurisdiction to try the case. So kung ang krimen ay ginawa sa Pilipinas, no, uh, we have jurisdiction to try the case. Ang krimen ay ginawa outside the Philippine territory. Wala tayong jurisdiction over that criminal offense. Except when it falls under those, under Article 2. No? Sa except, giving the exceptions and which are the following. And you know this already should uh, uh, commit an offense while on Philippine ship or airship. Alam naman natin yan, registration in the Philippines ay importante. It's not the nationality of the owner. Or, uh, no? or, or the nationality of the crew, kung saan na-register yung uh, vessel. Okay? Or, um, and it should be in the vessel registered in the Philippines and it should be in the high seas. No? Para magkaroon tayong jurisdiction. Pagka wala yan, pag sa labas yan, uh, wala tayong jurisdiction. If, it, if the vessel is in the uh, territory of another country, uh, then uh, that country has jurisdiction over the same. Or, sh or should forge or counterfeit any coin, currency, or oblig notes, obligations, and securities issued by our country or our republic or should be liable for the introduction of the obligations and securities. No? Ibig sabihin, ito ay inismagel sa atin. Or while being a public officer should commit an offense in the exercise of its public function. So, ibig sabihin, a public function. Ibig sabihin ba any crime commit committed by a, uh, a public uh, employee, a Filipino public employee abroad, 
uh, it, it it has ter- extraterritorial application hindi kung hindi related sa function niya wala tayong jurisdiction kung dispersing officer siya no at ito ay uh, ninakaw niya minalverse niya eh yun that's the time we have jurisdiction or should commit an offense while against national security and the law of nations so national security um treason misprision of treason ang mga gano no law of nations piracy mga mutiny so ang rebellion ay hindi crime against national security it is a crime against public order hence kung siya ay nagsusuporta ng rebellion, uh, supporting arms, bumibili, no, uh, he cannot be charged of, uh, he, uh, he cannot be prosecuted in the Philippines if, if he is committed the act abroad. no, Because uh, rebellion is a crime against nas- uh, public order and not against national security and the law of nations. Of course, prospectivity. prospectivity. Pag ang prospectivity, Uh, nagkaroon ng uh, retroactive application ang batas, hindi pe pwede yun kung ito ay hindi favorable sa uh, akusado. So, titingnan niyo yung mga yan, ha? So, due process, okay, kung, bin- kung uh, hindi siya binigyan ng chance to uh, opportunity to be heard, no? it was deprived Or at the time that he uh, committed the act, it was not punished. So it's an ex post facto law. Or a legislative act that punishes without judicial trial. It's a bill, bill of attainder. Check nyo. No? Okay. X. Absolute, o kaya absolutory causes. No? Ano may absolutory causes? Nyo? Yung... Gumamit, wala rin criminal liability pero may krimen like uh, na nangyari like instigation versus entrapment so the criminal idea comes from the public officer na pagka, pagka yan ay lawful ways and means to commit the crime that's entrapment so may criminal liability yung material executor sa instigation wala halimbawa sabi ng police officer kay X, bumili ka ng drugs no? kay A. No? Ito ang mark money. So, nagkaroon na kayo ng exchange of funds, no? uh, kaliwaan na kayo ng drugs and ng mark money, then we will arrest this person. E eh, nangyari, ang inaresto siya mismo, yung pusher buyer. So, that's instigation. Wala siyang criminal liability. Ano pa example ng absolutory causes? No? Uh, alimbawa ay light felonies. Light felonies na uh, accessories no? na gumawa ng krimen may, uh, sa light felonies. Accessor, accessories not uh, liable. O kaya persons exempted like Article 332 theft, estafa, and malicious mischief. Yung mga relatives enumerated therein, yung spouse, brothers and sisters-in-law, brothers and sisters, if living together, they are not criminally liable. O kaya nagkaroon spontaneous desistance no? in the attempted stage. No? Uh, hindi rin, uh, wala rin criminal liability. So check nyo yun. So consider the stages of execution. So, pag tinanong kayo, hindi lang naman uh, tat- aalamin what crime is committed, but also what stage was that committed. Okay? Like say, for example, the, if say the crime committed is attempted ho- uh, murder. So this is book one, attempted stages of execution. Murder is in book two, right? Rolled into one ba- ba- uh, case uh, problem. So you'll have to explain, justify why is it, is it attempted? Why is it not 
frustrated or consummated and why is it murder and not homicide so you have to identify the qualifying aggravating uh, circumstance present in order to constitute uh, as the crime of murder so let's go to specifically to stages of execution just for uh ano, recap Stages of execution, these are, uh, well, criminal liable. These are not preparatory acts. No, you know, preparatory acts are not punishable unless there is a law that punishes the same. So, attempted versus frustrated. Well, according to the definition of attempted, when he commences the commission of a crime, of a felony, uh directly by overt act no but does not perform perform all acts of execution which would produce the felony uh execution which will produce the felony so if it's a mean the crime is not consummated and what is the reason why the crime is not consummated uh, for reasons uh, other than his own spontaneous desistance. Okay. Okay. So frustrated, he performed already all acts of execution. But it is also not consummated. So, bakit hindi na consummate yung crime? For reasons, no? Or accidents, independent. Independent of the will of the perpetrator. No? Wala siyang kinalaman dyan. Okay. So, himayin natin isa't isa. First difference is he does not perform all acts of execution. So, frustrated, he perform all acts of execution. So, tinutok yung barrel, tapos binarel niya, so tinamaan lang ay slight physical injury. Did he or did he not perform all acts of execution? He did not perform all, all, all acts of execution acts of execution because the wound inflicted is not a mortal wound. So meaning to say there remains something else to be done in order to uh, kill that person. In frustrated, he performed all acts of execution no? as, as, uh, as uh, shown by the result of his acts. He inflicted a mortal wound. Pag sinabing mortal wound, it is a fatal wound. So, binarel, ilang beses, tinaman, vital parts of his organ, kidney, heart, etc. But the person survives so frustrated. No? Why? Because reasons, wala siya, for reasons, independent of the will of the perpetrator. Walang kinalaman yung si, si X. Pag baril niya, nakita niya, naghihingalo, umalis na siya. So, pag alis niya, a bystander brought the victim to the hospital. And because of that, no, the person survived. So, did he perform all acts of execution? Yes, because the wound is a mortal wound. Uh, but it was not consummated because the victim survived. And why was it, why did the uh, victim survive? Meron mag kinalaman yung perpetrator? Wala. It's the bystander who brought him to the hos hospital. And because of uh, timely medical attention, the person survived. So attempted, he did not perform all acts of execution. Meaning to say, it's not a mortal wound. Binaril niya, hindi tinamaan. Binaril niya, slight physical injury lang ang, ang, ang injury. No? But other than his own spontaneous desistance, when they talk about spontaneous desistance, it only is related to attempted. Kung attempted stage, nagkaroon ng spontaneous desistance, 
yung it's stage na meron pa siyang control no subjective phase no when he has the control uh then uh no n- then attempted felony is not committed like if he pointed his gun against a and with intent to kill and he ha- suddenly had a change of heart sabi niya wag na lang oh, kakarap pa ako kasalanan nito and he walk away so there's no attempted homicide or murder as the case may be because there is spontaneous resistance but will it be criminally liable tingnan mo yung act na ginawa niya at that point no not liable for attempted uh, felony but he can be liable for grave threat because uh, the grave threat was already consummated when he pointed his gun on the victim but he is not liable for attempted uh, felony or murder as the case may be sa frustrate pasa uh, so hindi siya magiging attempted pag may spontaneous resistance so frustrated hindi siya magiging frustrate pag dependent upon the will of the perpetrator so halimbawa si husband no nagbigay siya ng uh, poison pinoison niya yung wife niya because the uh, gusto niya nang makawala kay wife niya but while the value was dying at the point of death she ate who is a physician gave her an antidote for that poison and because of that no uh, w survived so it is now dependent upon his will so it's not frustrated anymore okay but he will be liable for any crime yes for, uh, he's liable for physical injuries no when he gave that uh, already uh, poison but not a frustrated uh, felony so remember that uh maraming tanong about uh, to distinguish whether to distinguish whether it's consummated frustrated or attempted okay next so attempted frustrated and consummated consummated when all the elements necessary for its execution and accomplishment are present so sir but nating dinedetermine whether it's attempted frustrated or consummated well it's because of the penalty no to be imposed no if the, the if the fel- if the felony committed is only frustrated no it is entitled to a reduction of one degree lower than that imposed on a consummated stage. When it's attempted, it's two degrees lower than that imposed upon on a consummated uh, felony. Now, elements of, well, dolo, culpa, or SPL. So dolo, uh, if that crime is dolo, tingnan mo criminal intent niya. What is the criminal intent of this person? pagkulpa negligence oh. when a person is charged with reckless imprudence oh, he raised the defense of good faith oh, wala naman akong uh, intention na masaktan yung pedestrian so all of a sudden sabi niya eh tumawid siya so nasagasaan ko siya pero no pero i acted in good faith So the question is is it a proper defense to raise good faith no sa kulpa no because what is punished in kulpa is what negligence no imprudence negligence lack of foresight lack of skill you can be acting in good faith okay lang but you were uh, ang speed mo is over speeding ka dito ay dapat 30 ka lang eh 20 ka lang lumagpas ka no kaya ka nakasagasa but in dolo good faith is uh, a proper defense bakit sa dolo you know that there's balis no uh, criminal intent bad faith and how do you negate bad faith by showing that your client if you're the lawyer he acted in good faith now sa SPL Is good faith a defense? SPL, wala. Because this is uh, 
as a special penal law. So let's differentiate those crimes punished under the RPC from that of uh, at least just a recap of the difference between the two. So RPC, I, I, I. RPC versus SPL. Well, generally, alam natin, pagka RPC, it's mala in se. When you say mala in se, it's evil in its nature. Diba? There's malice. There's evil intent. There's uh, bad faith. In SPL, is malong prohibitum. So, wala itong mga yan, di ba? So, there is only a voluntary breach of the law or breach or violation of the law, which is voluntary. Okay? So, um, pag ganyan, it's mala in se, it's evil in stature, bad faith, malicious, so good faith is a defense. So, malong prohibitum, uh, good faith is not a defense. Uh, okay. Um, but there are, so there are cases where, where though it's mala in, it's an RPC, yet it is deemed as malong prohibitum. May mga exception, no? This is only a general rule, like yung uh, technical malversation. If you can recall, in technical malversation, there is uh, a, a a public fund and that public fund is allocated by law or an ordinance for specific uh, purpose and that, that, that public fund was allocated for another public purpose other than for which the law or ordinance intended it to be. So, uh, sabi ng uh, under the uh, ano uh, the law, it is not mala in se. It is malum prohibitum, and therefore good faith is not a defense in technical malversation. So, merong ordinansya sa isang local uh, government. Okay, tayo tayo ng ano, ng building ng barangay uh, uh, siguro ano ng construction ng public building. Eh nagkaroon ngayon ng bagyo. So ang sabi nila, kailangan natin i-rehabilitate muna. Wag muna nating gamitin yung pera na yan. Uh, gamitin dati sa rehabilitation, no? The local Sangguniyan Bayan is really acting in good faith. Pero liable ba sila? Yes. Well, good faith is not a defense in technical malversation. Now, in, malum prohibi in SPL, it's malum prohibitum, right? But uh, there are case cases where SPL uh, is also deemed as mala in se. Like uh, plunder. Yung plunder ay mala in se yan. Evil in its nature. There's malice, there's bad faith. So therefore, no, dito sa plunder, uh, good faith is a proper defense. Eh, why? Because it's bala in se. Okay? okay? What are the other differences between RPC and SPL? Uh, the stages of execution. They are uh, appreciated. Yung... As I've told you a while ago, consummated, frustrated, and attempted in order to arrive at the proper penalty to be imposed. SPL, no. Unless they borrowed the stages of execution. Because generally, the crime is uh, deemed to be consummated in SPL. What else? Stages of execution. Uh, persons criminally liable. Persons criminally liable. Who are what? 
uh, the principles, accomplices, and accessories. No, we determine that in order to arrive at a proper penalty sa RPC. So if you if an accessory is entitled to a reduction of the penalties two degrees lower than that imposed upon a principal, itong accomplice is one degree lower than that imposed upon the principal. Sa SPL, wala because the offenders are deemed to be principal. No? Unless the SPL adopts this person's criminal libel. May, il- may ilan-ilan sa mga terrorists, merong principal sa accomplices no? na adopt this person's criminal libel. Okay? What else? Walang tayong space. Um, the nomenclature, well, y- yung rule of upsetting. Rule of upsetting. The presence of uh, mitigating, or when I talk about mitigating, I am referring to ordinary mitigating as against generic aggravating. We appreciate this presence no? in order to arrive at the proper penalty to be imposed. No? Sa SPL, walang rule of upsetting. None. Because there's a specific penalty uh, provided already under SPL for violation of that particular SPL. No, unless, uh, no, okay. And the nomenclature of penalties, mayroong kang re, uh, reclusion perpetua, reclusion temporal, sa SPL wala noon. Like, usually, um, to equate uh, reclusion perpetua, you have uh, life imprisonment as a penalty. But they're not the same, no? Uh, mas mas lenient pa ang reclusion temp- ang reclusion perpetua no 20 years one day to 40 years life imprisonment does not have like that so it's more it's usually it's imposed in SPL reclusion perpetua is rec- uh, uh imposed for crimes uh, punished under the RPC now there are cases where although it's an SPL no yet it uses the nomenclature of penalties of the RPC. Gumagamit sila ng mga reclusion perpetua, reclusion temporal, no, for a few SPL, like child abuse law. Now, when an SPL uses the nomenclature of penalties under the revised penal code, pagdating ng islaw, the formula that you're going to use, no, to arrive at the maximum term and minimum term of the indeterminate sentence would be that of the RPC. Uh, Pamiya, i-discuss natin ang islaw. Pero ang islaw is mainly favorable sa conviction. Kasi once he served the minimum term, makakalaya na siya. Ba? So mandated, whether it's RPC or SPL, ang court to impose the minimum and maximum term. No, They have specific separate rules in order to arrive at the minimum and maximum term. Now, if the SPL uses the nomenclature of penalties of the RPC, yung formula on how to arrive, the formula uh, under the revised uh, penal code will be used no, to secure, to obtain the maximum term and the minimum term of the indeterminate sentence. Okay. So let's go back. <clears throat> oh, similarities and distinctions, no? Like RPC, uh, malversation and estafa. Uh and uh estafa versus BP22, no? Malversation versus estafa. May, sa malversation, it involves public funds. Sa estafa, in, uh, involves private funds. Okay, walang problema yon. But and there is misappropriation no, or, 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 for his, the, or personal benefit. no. But ang tanong, yung bang malversation can be committed by a private person? Kasi generally, this is committed by a public uh, uh, officer. Eh, no? Yes. Uh, yung malversation, uh, a private person 
may be liable for malversation if he acted in conspiracy with a public officer. Okay. Sabi natin, ang malversation ay ginagabit ay public funds. Will there be cases? Well, although it's a, it's, it's, it's a private uh, property, yet it is subject, yet, yet a person may be liable for malversation. Yes. Yes. If kung ang uh, uh, private property is in custody of the law or in custodial lays, like the sheriff yung property ng defendant, no? at ginamit to ng sheriff for own personal benefit. So, the crime committed is malversation. Okay, what about Estafa versus uh, BP-22? No? Parehong check yan. So, um, allow me to explain this further. Estafa to its issuance of a post-dated check versus uh, BP-22. These are similar but BP, similar but not, but not identical. Differentiate these two. One is RPC, one is SPL. So you go with the basic difference that I lectured a while ago. Since it's RPC, it's bala in se, so therefore good faith is a defense. It's in BP 22, it's an SPL, so therefore it's a bala uh, prohibitum, and good faith is not a defense. Okay. Ano pa? Uh, this deceit and damage. Uh, these are elements of estapa. But it's not an element of BP-22. Why? Because what is punished in BP-22 is the issuance of a worthless check. Okay? Ano pa? <clears throat> uh, this, in, in Estafa, merong simultaneous obligation. In BP-22, pre existing obligation simultaneous you know, with with, uh, with with the parting of the goods is the employment of the seat so pre existing obligation then no need to impo to to employ the seat no kasi wala naman silang makukuwang benefit no dito pre existing obligation may utang ka lang no so uh, i you gave me your goods, then I paid you in check. Unfortunately, the check uh, was dishonored. No? What else? Yung three days, sa BP-22, five banking days. Okay, once the uh, check is dishonored, no? in Estafa, three issuance of a post-dated check. Itong Estafa is of two issuance of a post-dated check is a form of estafa through deceit. Kaya may damage and element then because this is estafa through deceit. Now, once the check is dishonored in estafa after the lapse of three days from the recon from the receipt of the notice of dishonor, pagbibigay siya ng prima facie evidence of deceit. No, prima facie evidence of deceit. Sa BP-22, five banking days reckon from uh, receipt of the notice of dishonor, ND. Now, after the lapse of the five banking days, without paying in full or make arrangement in full, it will give rise to presumption of knowledge of insufficiency of funds. So that's the basic difference between the, the two, no? Okay, let's go. Continue. Okay, when it when it is a complex crime, no. Pag sinabing complex crime, no, we have the compound complex crime. You have also complex crime 
proper. No? Siguro, mas mabuti na mag-share sa tayo ng whiteboard. Complex crime under Article 48. It's a compound complex crime, the first one. The second one is a uh, complex crime proper. Compound complex crime when a single act produces grave or less grave felonies or when it is a necessary means to commit another. Now, compound complex crime, dapat ang naproduce niya grave or less grave felonies. Ergo, Pagka ang the other crime, it's not it's not a complex crime if two crimes are committed, not necessarily, because those those two crimes must be uh, classified as grave or less grave. So it's grave when it's capital and afflictive, no, a uh, death, a reclusion, etc. hanggang prison mayor. Less grave are correctional penalties, so a uh, uh, prison correctional. Aresto mayor, suspension, and bestiero. So pag light, pag aresto menor, hindi siya less grave. Light siya. Kung the other, penal, the other crime committed is only punishable by aresto menor, which carries the penalty of one day to 30 days, so aresto menor lang, hindi siya, hindi siya mag, uh, mag for under less grave or grave felonies. And therefore, walang complex crime. So, alimbawa, si A, uh, nagturuhan grenade, killing B, killing C. So, that's grave felony. So, merong compound complex crime. Kung si B lang namatay at si, uh, si C ay suffered ng slight physical injury, which carries the penalty only, which is only a, a light felony, no? uh, then there is no compound complex crime. Sa complex crime proper, necessary means lang. No? Hin not, not indispensable. Tatandaan yun na not indispensable means. If it is an indispensable means, then there's no compound complex crime. Uh, there's no complex crime proper because it's already an element of the crime. Necessary means lang ito. Kaya, ang tanong, is there an estafa through falsification of a private document? Wala. Because in estafa, damage is an indispensable element. And in falsification of a private document, damage is also an indispensable and not necessary means uh, to commit the crime. Therefore, walang complex crime. Question, is there an estafa through falsification of a public document? Yes, kasi sa public sa falsification of a public document, no? Damage is not an essential or indispensable element of this crime. So, anong difference, babalik tayo, anong difference sa falsification of a private document from a public Sa public document, walang damage. Sa private document, no, mas mahirap i-prove. Kasi aside from the, fa uh, the act of falsifying, you've got to prove that it is a private document and that there is damage suffered. What is the penalty in complex crime? Penalty is for the most serious crime and impose it in its maximum period. So, ngayon, uh, maximum period. Eh, paano, sir, kung may mga uh, uh, ordinary mitigating circumstances? Pag complex crime yan, you do not appreciate the presence of ordinary mitigating. Why? Because the penalty in complex crime is deemed to be a special aggravating circumstance. Pag sinabing special aggravating circumstance, it cannot be offset by any ordinary mitigating circumstance. Okay? Kung paano, sir, kung meron privilege? 
Oh, they um, appreciate the privilege, yet still impose it in its maximum period. So, tatandaan nyo lang sa complex crime kung kailan siya not applicable in Asia, not applicable if the if it is not grave or less grave felony. So, if the other, if uh, either two of the crimes is not grave or less grave felony. It's also not applicable if it is the other crime is an SPL. You cannot complex no, uh, if the other crime is punished under special penal law. So there's no murder no, uh, complex. There's no rape complex with uh, 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 child abuse law. Why? Because it's, it's uh, one is an RPC Yet that one is an SPL. Also not applicable if the other one is to conceal the crime. So si A, pinatay si B, to conceal the crime, he burned the house no, where B was also inside. It's not a necessary means to commit another. It is already used to conceal another crime. So repeat, hindi applicable ang complex crime. If the other crime is not of grave or less grave felonies, or if both, or if the ad, or if one is involved is an SPL, you cannot uh, complex with with an SPL, or the other one is to conceal another crime. Okay. Okay. Let's go back. Ang tinatanong na, naman, what is the participation of A? Or how about B? So therefore, you have to consider the persons who may be criminally liable. So, usually there's a follow-up question. No? So, anong crime ng ginawa ni A at anong participation niya? So, it could either be a principal, it could be an accomplice, or accessories. So let's uh, go to uh, this. So principal. Accomplices. Accomplice. And accessory. can be a principal by direct uh, participation number 2 is with uh, by principal by inducement and by indispensable cooperation uh, let's go with the uh, principal no they have this criminal resolution and they participated in the commission of the crime so all co-conspirators co are deemed to be a principal by direct participation. Tatandaan niyo yun. Let's go back. Kung ano mga uh, ano sa conspiracy. Mere conspiracy is not punishable. Not punishable siya. <clears throat> So there's no conspiracy to commit uh, murder. No, be conspiracy general rule not punishable unless there is a law that punishes the same, like conspiracy to commit treason, rebellion, sedition, kudita. No, where mere conspiracy is already punishable. But if there is no law that punishes such kind of conspiracy, then it's not punishable. Ano pa mga ano yun? Uh, principles in conspiracy. Uh, conspiracy cannot be based on mere conjectures. No, hindi fighting uh, based on conjectures or surmises or suspicion. It must be proved as the crime itself. 
no? Kasi, ano, the act of one is the act of all. So, i-prove nyo yan with, uh, by proof beyond reasonable doubt, no? Also, uh, it must be the act of one is the act of all. No? Dito na, ito na lang gamitin natin. Uh, wag mo na accessory. The act of one is the act of all. Itong the act of one is the act of all, dapat di, so kung, kung si A ang driver, uh, dinala niya si B and C at the scene of the crime, B is the lookout and C was the one assigned to kill the victim, the act of C in killing the victim is also the act of A because there is conspiracy. And you know, there is conspiracy when two or more persons come to an agreement concerning the commission of the crime and they decided to commit the sign. So irregardless, no, irrespective of uh, the parts actually performed by A, B, and C, if it is pursuant to an agreement, then the act of one is the act of all. No? So, there is there are several kinds of uh, conspiracy conspiracy express and implied implied conspiracy you cannot prove the actual agreement but you can see that there is commonality commonality of criminal design they acted in concert or in unison yun ang mga ano yan, phrases that you can uh, use no express or implied implied no you cannot actually prove the actual agreement but the output no the, the, their participation shows that there is commonality of criminal design that they, they acted in concert or in unison why because the example would be <laughs> the wounds inflicted by A, B, and C are all multiple wounds showing their commonality of criminal design. What is the criminality of uh, ano, design? That is to kill the victim. Uh, so therefore, kung wala namang conspiracy, no, in, walang, um, walang application of the act of one is the act of all. So you only have to choose between the two. Pag walang conspiracy, no, uh, the act of one is the act of all is not applicable. They will only be liable for the crime that they conspired to commit. No? I mean, the, yes, pagka merong conspiracy. Pag walang conspiracy, liable lang sila sa individual acts that they perform. Again, pag walang conspiracy, liable lang sila for the individual acts that they perform inducement no inducement could be by force or by inducement pag irresistible force no ay walang criminal liability yan no so, pag inducement by price reward no promise pero importante dito is that it is with the intention of procuring the crime and secondly is that it should only be the determining cause. Kung there is also other reasons no, other than the inducement of a price reward or promise, but he, if he had an existing grudge with the victim, then this is not applicable. It should only be the determining cause. It should be the inducement uh, only, no, with the intention of procuring the, the crime. In indispensable cooperation, the crime would not have been committed. If without his participation. So he's different from that of a principal. Uh, tatandaan nyo yan. In accomplished, tatandaan nyo that there is no agreement. No plan. Why if there's agreement or plan, then he is a principal. No? He has knowledge of the criminal design, but he only concurs no? or cooperates. There is only a hairline difference between agreement, 
plan from that of concurring or cooperating. No? Uh, pagka nag-concur siya at the onset and later on, he was already uh, he already agreed to the commission of the crime and they already planned and they already decided to do so, then it only shows that there's conspiracy. And if there's conspiracy, the offenders would be deemed as uh, principals. That's why in a compass, make sure you know, to take note that there is no agreement, no plan, no, there, no decision, but he only concurs and cooperates by previous or simultaneous acts. He has knowledge of the uh, uh, criminal design by the principals and he concurs and he cooperates the same. So kung sinabi na lang uh, pinahiram ng baril, babarilin yung ano, yung victim, then he only concurs and cooperates the same. But uh, um, the participation of an accomplice, and this is very important to note, is that dapat is their participation is not equal nor greater than that of the principal. So, pwede siya mag-inflict ng uh, physical injuries, pero ang mortal wound is that of the principal. Pagka ang ginawa niya ay mortal wound, pareho rin ng principal, then uh, he may not be an accomplice but is already uh, a principal. Okay, let's go to uh, accessories. Accessories, he has what? Knowledge of the conspiracy and knowledge. Dalia. He has knowledge without uh, of the criminal uh, design, knowledge of the crime without taking part as a uh, principal or, or an accomplice takes part subsequent to the commission of the crime by the following acts, tatlo yun. By profiting from the effects of the crime or concealing or destroying the body of the crime or the corpus delicti. The body of the crime is the fact that the, the crime was committed. It's not the victim value of the victim. And if he harbors, conceals, or assisted in the escape of the principal. So if he assisted in the escape of an accomplice, then this is not applicable. Huh? Okay. If the person assisting is a private person, the principal must be guilty of the following crimes. Treason, parricide, murder, attempt on the life of the chief executive, and is known to be habitual delinquent. Or habitual delinquent. If he is a public officer who assisted uh, the principal, no, any crime, any crime provided the public officer ay merong abuse of uh, his uh, public position. Nag-abuse siya ng public position. Now, accessory. Sabi natin, profiting, uh, <clears throat> cons Concealing, destroying the body of the crime or harbors, conce uh, harbors conceals or assists in the escape of the principal. Okay, let's go to a uh, crime which are similar but not identical. No? So, ano yung uh, usually sa profiting from the effects of the crime would be uh, the anti-fencing law. Sa third laman, harboring, concealing, or assisting the escape, uh, obstruction of justice. So differentiate uh, accessory under paragraph 1 for the anti-fencing law. Oh, balik na naman tayo do sa the difference between RPC and SPL. You can use that already. 
But yung accessory in titles again, as I mentioned, two degrees lower than that imposed upon a principal. In anti-fencing law, uh, there is a specific penalty for the offender. And in anti-fencing law, uh, there should be robbery or theft committed, no? And that the offender knows or should have known, knows or should have known that it, that the items involved came from the proceeds of robbery or theft. So pag walang robbery or theft, walang anti-fencing law. No violation of such. No? Pagka differentiate, no, uh, accessory under paragraph 3 sa 19 to, no, article 19, paragraph 3, from that obstruction of justice, balik ulit kayo, one is RPC, one is SPL. Obstruction of justice is one who delays obstructs, impedes in the investigation and prosecution of the crime. Yun. Now, under Article 20, sa Article 20, there are persons uh, exempted from criminal liability. No? Article 20. Na Spouse, ascendants, descendants, uh, legitimate natural brothers and sisters, okay, and relatives by affinity with the same degree, memorizing your Article 20, okay? Uh, except they're not exempted if they profited from the effects of the crime. So, yung father assisted uh, the escape of his son, the principal in the crime of murder. And they, he also, uh, the son gave him 100,000 pesos. It's the proceeds from the crime that he committed. No, it was taken from the victim that, uh, his son killed. Would, would he be liable and would he be accepted under Article 20? No, because he profited from the effects of the crime. Okay. Now, assuming that they are accepted, all these persons are accepted. No. They are not profit from the effects of the crime. They are not liable as an accessory, but can they can be liable for the anti-fencing law violation of the anti-fencing law, and they can be liable also for obstruction of justice. So remember that. Okay, let's continue. So as I said, or may not be liable under Article 20. Okay, check also Article 4 if this is the question. Is A criminally liable for the death of X? Hindi naman tinatanong what crime is committed. Tingnan mo lang, baka pa mia, it may fall under Article 4, the first paragraph which uh, refers to approximate cause and secondly is impossible crime. No? Uh, remember Article 4. Article 4 is, it states that how criminal liability is incurred. No? Number one, five, committing a felony, although the wrongful act done, be different from that which intended. Second is, uh, by performing an act which would be an offense against persons or property. Were it not for its inherent impossibility of its accomplishment or employment of inadequate or ineffectual means. Baka lang mag-fall siya dyan sa ano, proximate cause or sa impossible crime. Okay, let's go specifically uh, sa examples na. Example of what I said the first one is that uh, no crime is committed. Uh, v, 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 G, this is actual bar exam, no? and J, J, uh, uh, V, V, G, J, G, 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 and J, J conspired to overthrow the Philippine government. V, G was recognized as the titular head of the conspiracy. Several meetings were held and the uh, plan was uh, finalized. Okay. J.J. bothered by his conscience, uh, confessed to Father Abraham that he, uh, and together with his, uh, the persons that I mentioned a while ago, uh, conspired to overthrow the government. And Father Abraham did not report this information to the proper authorities. 
Ang tanong, did Father Abraham commit a crime? And if so, what crime is uh, what crime did he commit? And what is his criminal liability? Walang ginawa, walang crime si Father Abraham. There is no crime. Ito yung nulong crime, nula po henesi ni Lehe. There is no crime when there is no law punishing the same, no? Uh, there is no crime under the law that punishes failure to disclose any knowledge of conspiracy to commit rebellion. Although there is a crime of misprision of treason, however, there is no crime of misprision of rebellion. Here, there is intent to overthrow the government, which is actually an element of the crime of rebellion. Consequently, he should be acquitted. Now, example of yung territoriality rule. No. Bar question. While his wife was still living, C A married C single in Hong Kong. So married siya. So nagpakasal ulit siya sa ibang tao kay C no, sa Hong Kong. And after living there, there for a couple of years, A and C returned to and settled in Manila. Question. Can A be prosecuted for bigamy? Or second, in any event, can A be prosecuted for any other crime? If so, what? And what about C? Okay. They are not criminally liable. What of them? For bigamy. Why? Because the second marriage was celebrated saan? Outside the Philippine territory sa Hong Kong. So the, the general rule of territoriality applies. That if the crime is committed outside the Philippines, uh, we do not have, Philippine courts have no jurisdiction to try the case. And considering further that, no, this does not fall under any of the exceptions under Article 2 of the Revised Penal Code. Uh, he, they can be liable for concubinage if, say, for example, uh, if they live cohabitate, cohabitated as husband and wife, no? Yon. Okay, example of instigation and not entrapment. Did he, a member of the NBI, was in, approached by his compadre regarding the latter's plan to hold a hold up on a nearby bank. So Didi agreed to lend his car as to get away car. He also asked his driver, FF, to drive the car for EE. Now, sa araw ng krimen was to take place, si Didi, yung NBI, nag-tip off sa local police. So yung tao, yung kumpadre niya, na umapproach sa kanya, yung nagplano to hold up a nearby bank, was arrested. So ang tanong, Pwede bang erase ni EE yung defense of instigation uh, by DD? Ininstigate ba siya? Hindi. No? EE cannot raise the defense of instigation by DD. Instigation takes place when a peace uh, officer in the performance of duties induces a person to commit a crime. The reason why the crime is committed is because of the inducement. Here, the facts of the problem do not show that uh, DD induced or instigate EE to plan the holdup of the bank. In fact, the plan was already conceived by EE when he approached DD. When DD agreed to lend his car as a getaway vehicle and allow his driver to drive it for free, now it was to facilitate or to devise a way, a lawful ways to apprehend uh, EE, his uh, companion. His compadre. Did he tip off the local police on the day the crime was to take place? Okay, we have already uh, example of uh, stages of execution. In the jewelry section of a big store, Julia snatched a couple of bracelets no, and Put this in her purse. At the store's exit, however, she was arrested by the guard after being radioed by the store personnel who caught the act in the store's moving camera. So, ang tanong, consummated ba yan? Frustrated or attempted? No?
Ang sagot is consummated. Bakit? The taking of the bracelet was already completed. No? Complete after Julia no, uh, succeeded in putting them in her purse. Julia acquired complete control. Alam niyo naman sa theft, ganun, na complete control yan. No? Af- uh, after putting them in her purse, hence the taking with intent to gain is complete and thus the crime is consummated. Oh, almost the same ito. Eh? Si Sunshine, a beauty's kolehiala, a shoplifter, pumunta sa... So alam niyo kung gaano katagal itong bar, sa, bar na problem na to Sa Ever Department Store and proceeded to the women's wear section. So yung sales lady was of the impression that she brought to the fitting room three pieces of swimsuits. No? Nung umal, lumabas siya sa fitting room, she returned only two pieces to the clothes rack. So... So talaga yung sales lady naging suspicious and alerted the store detective. So si Sunshine ay he was she was stopped by the detective, no? Bago siya makalabas ng store and brought to the office of the store manager. Okay, and detective and the manager search and found her wearing the third swimsuit under a blouse. Ito parang inulit lang yung bar, di ba? So Ganun lang yung favorite bar question nito eh. Yung consummated theft. No? At walang frustrated yan. No? So the theft was consummated because the taking or asportation was complete. The asportation is complete when the offender acquired exclusive control of the personal property no? being um, taken. In this case, when Sunshine wore the swimsuit under her blouse and pants and was on her way out of the store with evident intent to gain, the act of taking constitutes theft and being complete, it is consummated. And it is not necessary that the offender is in a position to dispose of such property. Etong mahirap. Tingnan natin. I-analyze natin to. Several defend de, several, this is an example of what I emphasized a while ago. Several offenders and several victims. The, this next bar problem calls for mastery of the following. Yung elements ng various crimes na under RPC and SPL and the application ng complex crime. Ah, uh, Okay, ready na kayo? On the way, PNP boat, motor boat was intercepted by a third... Ah, hindi ba? Anyway. Two PNP officers, no? X and Y, on board a motor boat with C, a civilian motorman. So, X, Y, and Z, magkakasama sila sa motor boat. No? They arrested C, A, and B, who were doon nasa bangka no? for dynamite fishing. So the latter's banka was towed uh, towards the municipality. Nung papunta, yung PNP motor boat was intercepted by a third banka. Sino mga occupants? Si C, si D, and E. So yung unang-una ay si A and B na hinuli ni X, Y, and Z. But there were a third banka, yung occupants si C, D, and E, who tried to negotiate for the release of A and B and their banka. Pero ayon ng mga police instead shouted at C, D, and E that they too are also arrested, no? under arrest. So anong ginawa ni C and D and E? No? They threw hand, uh, dy- dynamite sticks doon sa mot- PNP motorboats. So the first explosion killed X. So yung pag ng C sa kadid ng E, ni E, pag... Uh, nag-throw ng dynamite, killed X. X is a PNP officer. So, ano sa mga nangyari? Si A and B naman also reacted by throwing dynamite at the PNP boat or boat. This time around, dalawa namatay. Si Y and Z. What crime, question, or crimes did A, B, C, D, and E commit? No? Dami yan. So, himay natin isa-isa. Hmm. 
Victims, X and Y, PNP officers. Si Z is a civilian who owned the voter vote. O silang biktima, X, Y, and Z. Dalawang police isang civilian. Offenders, may first group, A and B. May second group, C, D, and E. Persons responsible, si C, D, and E. Their acts, first explosion, and dynamite, no? namatay si X, na police. No, persons responsible sa second group, si A and B, responsible sila for the second explosion, which killed Y, also PNP, and D, Z, civilian. Okay, suggested answer na tayo. Suggested answer, C and D and E are liable for complex crime of direct assault with murder, qualified by explosion. No? Why? As to the death of X, no? direct assault, PNP siya, tapos murder, namatay kasi siya, qualified with a qualifying aggravating circumstance of explosion. A and B, liable din sila ng complex crime of direct assault with murder, qualified by explosion. As to the death of Y, because Y is also a PNP officer. Uh, si A and B are also liable, dalawa na matay eh, dun sa isang civilian, for the death of Z. Murder lang, simple murder. No crime of direct assault. No, can be filed in so far as the death of Z is concerned, he being merely a civilian. Tapos, liable din sila sa violation of uh, PD 534, which is illegal fishing. So, nakita nyo yung example na labo-labo sila dito. No? Fishing with the use of explosive is punishable under said degree. Decree. Okay. Elements of a crime, no, sinabi ko kanina, no, check on the elements of a crime. X purchased from Y, the owner of a grocery store, a merchandise. He signed a promissory note for the amount of 10,000 pesos, payable on or before October 30, 2020. No? On the date ng maturity ng promissory note, X gave Y a check. Pero upon presentment with the bank, the same was uh, dishonored for insufficiency of funds. So, pero ang tanong niya is X liable for estafa. Alam natin kanina ng uh, damage and deceit ay uh, element of estafa. X is not liable for estafa. The check was issued on the date of the maturity of a promissory note for 10,000 pesos. Deceit was not employed in this case. In addition, it was only issued in payment of a pre-existing obligation. And since X did not obtain anything by the issuance of the said check, even if dishonored for insufficient of funds, estafa is not committed. Kulpa. No, example of bar questions sa kulpa. In the course of a funeral procession, a young mourner who was marching in front of the funeral hearse uh, momentarily stopped, uh, stopped uh, to tie her shoes, shoelaces, which had become untied. The driver of the hearse, who was driving at 5 miles an hour, was then looking at the stores by the roadside at hindi siya nakita. So he continued to drive. Ang problema na he ran over the girl, killing her. Na yung mga tao shouted and gestured. Tumigil naman siya. Stop. Now question, if you were the parent of the girl victim, what crime would you charge? If you think a crime had been committed and again soon, explain your answer briefly. Suggested answer, only the driver can be charged of reckless imprudence resulting to homicide. No, Negligent siya. His negligent act of not taking any precaution, precaution caused the death of the victim. Another, SPL naman. A and his fiancé B were walking in the plaza when they met a group of policemen who had been tip of that A was in the possession was in possession of prohibited drugs so A and B na mama shell uh encounter sila ng group ng mga police policemen nung nakita ni 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 A yung policemen 
uh, and sensing that they were after him, he handed as a shay containing shabu to his fiancé at uh, inutusan niya to hide it her, on her handbag. And the policeman saw B placing the sachet in her handbag. So, ang tanong, if B were unaware that A was a drug user or pusher or that what was inside the sachet given to her was shabu, is she nonetheless liable under, dangerous drug, under the Comprehensive Drugs Act? Alam naman natin na good faith is not in defense of SPL. No? Kahit na uh, good faith is not a defense, no? B is still not criminally liable kasi ang prosecution must prove animus possidenti. And the facts clearly show, in this case, the absence of animus possidenti or intent to possess, which is an element of the crime, of illegal possession of drugs. The accused was not fully and consciously aware of being in possession of the dangerous drugs. Similarities and distinctions, no? robbery and theft. Ito, maganda ito. A. Broke open a window and without entering the house, took a wooden chest lying underneath the window. He brought out the chest to the yard where he broke it open and took away contents thereof, all valued at uh, 10,000 pesos. What crime did he commit? No? Uh, I emphasize without entering the house. No? Robbery ba yan or theft? At the first glance, ang tingin natin robbery kasi di ba, it's, it's a closed receptacle to be taken outside and to be broken outside. Pero the suggested answer is that the crime committed by A is theft. For robbery with force upon things to be committed, the offender should have entered the house. In this case, no, the facts of the problem show that A, without entering the house, took the wooden chest lying underneath the window which he broke open. To constitute robbery, the offender who brought outside the lock receptacle Dapat nakapasok siya. No? Must have entered the premises. Otherwise, the crime committed is only theft. Similarities but not identical under the revised penal code. Piracy and mutiny. Uh, tingnan lang natin. Piracy may intent, may intent to, ano dyan, tend to gain. Para siyang, uh, para siyang robbery, para siyang theft. No? Immutity, anong, anong, anong intent? The intent is only to disavoy their superior officers. Okay, ang piracy can two kinds. Talam niyo to, piracy in high seas and piracy in uh, Philippine waters. No, The difference between piracy in high seas and, uh, and mutiny. Piracy in high seas is that it is committed by a stranger. No, uh, Hindi sila members ng complement. Sa mutiny, members of the complete bed or passenger sila. Pero sa piracy in Philippine waters, no? tandaan nyo, uh, pagkakaiba nito sa Filipi uh, piracy in high seas, uh, piracy in Philippine waters may be committed by passengers or members of the complete bed. Kailangbawa sa barko, kailangbawa inter-island, no? from Manila papuntang Davao. So here comes A na... Ang ginawa niya, he forcibly opened the bag of another passenger. No, in slash niya yon using force and got the laptop of the victim. So anong crime? Akala natin robbery, pero hindi. It happened sa inter-island sa vessel, no, within Philippine territory, no. Uh, at the uh, nagkaroon ng ganon, no, taking the uh, belongings of another person. So the crime committed is piracy in Philippine waters. No? In piracy, uh, seizing uh, or attacking the vessel no? or taking the belongings, the cargo of another person. It becomes qualified, but if the seizing is, uh, or, or attacking is by boarding or firing at the same. Or if it is... Uh, Inabandon niya mga victim without means of saving themselves 
or if it is accompanied by murder, uh, yung mga and uh, rape or f- uh, and, and physical injuries na. Okay? And homicide as well. Rebellion, uh, as mentioned kanina, is there is uh, and sedition, uh, they are similar in that there is public uprising. But in the, a sedition, no, the, publis, the public uprising is tumultus. Yung tumultus na yun, peculiar yun sa sedition. Rebellion, there is public uprising and but and taking arms against the government. Taking up arms against the government. Which is not an element of sedition. No? At sa rebellion, ang purpose is political. No? To overthrow the government and sa sedition naman, it's social and political. Ang kudita, anong intention ng kudita? Uh, ito ba ito overthrow the government? Not necessarily. That is to seize or diminish state power. Again, to seize or diminish state power. Merong swift attack. No, tandaan nyo, pag kudita, swift attack. Coupled with VITS by v- VITS. No, violence, intimidation, threat, strategy, or stealth. No? So, yun ang elements ng kudita. Pag sinabing parricide, no, blood relation lang yan, derecho lang yan. The killing of the father, mother, or child, whether legitimate or illegitimate. Pag other ascendants, katulad ng mga grandparents, ay kailangan legitimate yan. Other descendants, other than the children, dapat legitimate yan. No? Mga grandchildren, etc. So, yun. Tapos, uh, hindi, isa lang ang walang blood relation. No? Isa lang ang walang blood relation. Yung spouse. But the spouse, of course, must be a legitimate spouse. So, proof of legit- legitimacy is not needed pag father, mother, or child. Pag killing of a spouse, Proof of legitimacy and the other persons as well. Infanticide, the killing is uh, of a child less than three days old. No? Yun. Regardless kung relative sila or not. Murder and homicide, um, in, um, common element is intent to kill. Labang do sa murder, merong uh, qualifying aggravating katulad ng treachery evident premeditation use of fire at outraging or scoffing at the corpse no alimbawa sa murder sa treachery dalawang treachery elements no dapat may no opportunity to defend uh, himself and that it was consciously and deliberately adapted by the offender to ensure uh, it's execution. So, eh, paano kung may opportunity to defend himself? Uh, eh, tapos, ang ginawa, napatay din ang biktima. Pero pinugutan at tinapon yung ulo sa, ano, sa ilog. So there could be, uh, at the first class, akala mo homicide kasi may opportunity din to defend himself naman eh. Pero is, merong isang qualifying aggravating na sinasabing outraging or scoffing at the corpse. So, at this case, the crime actually is murder. No? So, sa treachery, balik tayo. Sabi natin, opportunity to defend himself. May mga Supreme Court decision na, na initial reaction no, na, na itulak niya yung offender still is will be considered as no opportunity to defend himself. Eh, sa diba, naitulok niya, may, to, may opportunity to defend himself. Not necessarily. Pagka daw yun brought out, brought out ng reflexes. So, ito ang magic word. Pag, ano yan, uh, brought, out, brought about by his reflexes, no opportunity to defend himself uh, pa rin yan. Kasi ang pinaka-essence ay ganito. Whether he had his inkling that his life is in danger. Kung wala namang inkling that his life is in danger, then uh, it will fall into treachery. Okay? Uh, pag murder and homicide, no, 
dapat you have to prove intent to kill. But if the victim died, then intent to kill is presumed. So, walang physical injuries siya. Pag dapatay yan, intent to kill is presumed. E probo otherwise. No? O, anong pagkakaiba ng robbery, theft, estafa? Robbery and theft, uh, unlawful taking of personal property belonging to another, using violence, intimidation against person. Pag robbery and rob, force upon things. Robbery by force upon things. Sa theft, Okay, remove niya yung force na yun. Violence, intimidation, tanggalin mo yun. Tanggalin mo rin ng force upon things. The crime is theft. Although there are so many ways to commit theft as well. Uh, uh, finder's keeper, nakapulot ka ng cellphone. Ay, salamat sa Diyos, nabigyan niya ako ng cellphone. Habang naglalakad, nakita niya sa kalye. Hindi. Naka, what, the crime that you committed is the crime of theft. Ang obligasyon mo, ibalik mo yan sa may-ari o kaya isurrender mo sa polis. No? Now, uh, ang theft and estafa, anong pagkakaiba nito? Uh, uh, physical possession over juridical possession. No? Uh, yung theft, meron din qualified theft. Eh. No? Abuse of confidence. Uh, uh, coconut taken from uh, coconut plantation meron ding uh, fish taken from fisheries on occasion flow of conflagration uh, calamity or even vehicular accident pag ka nagbanggaan at may namatay dyan no, at dinakawan, ninakaw yung tinuha yung wallet ng unconscious driver the crime is that simple theft it's qualified theft now, sa qualified theft meron dyang carnapping. Ah uh, meron diyang motor vehicle, sabe? Ah uh, qualified theft of taking a motor vehicle. Ang tanong, meron naman tayong uh, carnapping. Ano pagkakaiba ng qualified theft versus uh, carnapping? Sa so, carnapping, the taking is um the taking is without the consent of the owner, no? Hindi alam ng owner na kinuha yung kanyang sasakyan. Pangalawa, Gumamit siya ng force, intimidation, violence. Nagtutok siya ng barel, panaksak. Di ba? So, sa theft, ibinigay sa kanya yung susi. He received that with physical possession. No, driver, o oh, sige, bili ka ng ano, o oh, eto yung susi, bumili ka ng ano, grocery. Hindi bumalik. That's qualified theft. Nagkakatiwalaan ka ng tao. No? And you have physical possession. Yung possession mo ay temporary. Sa estafa naman, ang possession mo ay juridical, no? Possession. At pwede mong erase 'yan sa even against the ano, the owner. If alimbawa you are uh, on the repair shop, no? Pina merong nagpagawa ng sasakyan and the contract is that it should it the contract is that it will be with the repair repair shop for five days to be repaired. Now, the, the owner cannot take it within the second and third because no, the repair shop, the manager, the staff has a uh, juridical possession over the same. Now, if that five-day period lapsed no, then uh, and still uh, it was not returned, then the, the crime committed is already estafa. Okay. We discussed already estafa versus malversation a while ago. What about uh, adultery and concubinage? Adultery is is just a sexual intercourse committed by a woman uh, with a man other than her husband. So each, each sexual intercourse is uh, adultery. Can a man be liable for adultery? Yes, if he has knowledge that that woman is actually married. Concubinage, unlike adultery and concubinage, it doesn't follow that just because there's sexual intercourse no, by a man with a woman other than his uh, wife uh, is concubinage. No. So under three instances lang, no? if that happened, number one, if that happens within the conjugal dwelling, uh, iba din pinag-uusapan. Pangalawa, under, under uh, scandalous circumstances. 
pangatlo, cohabitation outside and they live as husband and wife doon sa place na yon. These are uh, crimes which are similar, punishable sa RPC, similar but not identical. And you must be able to uh, delineate one from the other. No? Titingnan ng examiner yan. Alam ba nila hair that difference between uh, among these crimes? So dapat alam niya yan. Accessory, we discussed it already. Uh, okay. Um, and estafa, yung direct bribery na lang, ang anti-graph. Direct bribery, again, is punished under the revised penal code. Anti-graph is SPL. The elements and the anti-graph like uh, 3B, yung of public officer has the right to intervene. Or E, yung uh, evident bad faith, manifest partiality, grave inexcusable negligence. Or uh, or entering into a contract sa 3G, which is gravely and manifestly disadvantageous to the government. Or 3H, having interest, which is a pecuniary interest prohibited by the Constitution. Or by law, these are not elements in direct bribery. So direct bribery, no, uh, is just received. Um, this, this, the the uh, uh, the price, the reward, uh, in consideration of uh, performing an act constituting a crime. No, if he agreed, then it's bribery. If uh, not constituting a crime, uh, ang kinakailangan ay uh, kailangan matanggap niya. Now, these are not elements of under the Anti-Graph and Corrupt Practices Act. Arson. No? Be set and murder. Ito, RPC no? versus the SPL. Question, be set now a house of on fire by way of revenge against the latter. We did not know that A was inside. A died because of the fire. Anong crime ang ginawa ni B? And suppose B nyo na si A ay nandoon sa loob, yet uh, still set the house on fire. Okay, and another question, before setting it on fire, B entered the house and killed A. So pagkabatay, pagkatas yung pinatay si A, then B set the fire on fire to hide or to conceal the body of A. What crime or crimes did B uh, co commit? No, commit yan. So, first question, first answer. First uh, answer to the first question. B will be liable for the special complex crime of arson with a uh, homicide. Because that resulted from arson. Or you can call it aggravated arson. Because that results because of arson. Pero kung alam niya that B knew that A was inside the house and yet he still set the house on fire, eh, the crime is murder. Why? Because the fire is now used as a qualifying aggravating circumstance in the crime of murder. Question. If B killed a, before the house was set on fire, two crimes are committed, murder and arson. Arson was committed to conceal the crime of murder. So, dalawang crime yan. Crimes. Okay, this is what I told you a while ago. So, let's just analyze it and how it was asked. X, after promising Y to give uh, him 100,000 pesos induced the latter to kill Z who at the time was vacationing in an isolated island uh, in the sea which can be easily be reached by a boat. Y who owns the only motor boat in the locality offered to transport and actually transported Y to said island. And upon reaching the island, Y killed Z. Question, indicate whether X, Y, and Z is a principal or accomplice in the commission of a crime. Uh, X is a principal by inducement. Why? Because by promising to give Y 100,000 pesos to kill Z, which is an agreement for consideration, the inducement was made directly with the intention of 
procuring the commission of the crime. Ganun na sa inducement, eh, di ba? Wala naman siyang personal reason except no, it becomes the determining cause. Inducement was the determining cause for the commission of the crime. Si Y naman is a principal by inducement. Baka, bakit? Because he killed C pursuant to the inducement or agreement. No? Why is neither a principal nor a prince nor an accomplice? Bakit? No, although the, the W offered and actually transported Y to the island where C was vacationing as he owns the only motor boat in the locality, the facts of the problem do not show that W has any knowledge of the criminal design nor purpose of Y. Dapat sa accomplice, alam yung criminal design. In this case, hindi niya alam. Hindi rin siya liable as a principal by direct participation because he did not participate directly in the execution of the act constituting the crime. No? He is also not a principal by inducement because he did not induce White to kill Z. Okay. okay. Next. Why is that an accomplice? Because he has also no knowledge of the criminal design of Y, the principal, by direct participation. If Y has knowledge of the criminal design or purpose of, uh, of uh, Y, then he will be liable as principal by indispensable cooperation. Why? Because he cooperated with Y in the commission of the crime by transporting Y to the island. And it is the only the uh, one only available uh, in the locality. Yon. Pag sinabing is X criminally liable for the death, ting, uh, uh, tingnan nyo to. No, on his way home from office, ZZ rode in a chipney. Subsequently, XX boarded the same chipney. So pag, uh, upon reaching a secluded place in Quezon City, XX pulled out a grenade from his bag and announced a hold-up. He told CC to surrender his watch, wallet, and cell phone. And fearful for his life, CC jumped out of the vehicle, but as he fell, his head hit the pavement, causing his instant death. Ang tanong, liable ba si XX sa death ni CC? Yes. No? Uh, his act of pulling out a grenade and announcing a hold holdout coupled with the demand for the watch and cell phone is felonious, no? And that was the proximate cause of CC's jumping out of the chimney. Or stated otherwise, no? The death of CC was the direct, natural, and logical consequences of XX felonious act, which created an immediate danger, sense of danger in the mind of CC who tried to avoid such danger by jumping out of the window. Okay, so now uh, we are going to uh, special penal laws. No? Mag-SPL tayo. Diretso na tayo, no? Okay, the indeterminate sentence law. If a special law adopts the penalties from the revised penal code, this law will apply just as it would in felonies. So, magiging RPC na siya. No? Seventy-six ten, although is a special law, adopted the penalties defined in RPC. Now. Alam natin na yung imposition of the indeterminate sentence is mandatory in all criminal cases. Kung meron kayong dapat tandaan dito, is this. No? You just memorize the disqualifications under Islam. Those uh, punishable by death or life imprisonment. No? Hindi applicable ang, ang Islam. Ang Islam kasi kinangang uh, mandated yan. Eh, whether RPC or SPL. Ang, ang court dapat mag-impose dyan. No? Uh, ang pagkakaiba nito sa probation, ang probation, hin hindi siya, the, the convict did not go to jail. In Islaw, 
no once the the convict had served the minimum term of his indeterminate sentence then he will be now eligible to be released on parole okay so but this is not applicable to sp specific crimes so death life imprisonment treason conspiracy proposal to commit treason treason misprision of treason rebellion sedition espionage those convicted of piracy habitual delinquents and those who can escape uh, from confinement or those who evaded the sentence no, are not entitled to islaw benefits of islaw those granted with conditional pardon who violated the terms thereon and those whose maximum imprisonment does not exceed one year so straight penalty if the penalty does not exceed one year hindi ka pa pwedeng magsabi ng uh, two months minimum to six months maximum no the court may just impose a straight penalty of six six months and uh, one day or three days no uh, it doesn't have the court this did not uh is not mandated to impose minimum or maximum term of the indeterminate sentence if it does not exceed one year imprisonment. Okay, it does not, uh, does not apply to this chair because it does not in, in, involve imprisonment. Ito lang ang pataas niyan, no? SPL shall not exceed the maximum fixed by law. Minimum is, uh, uh, shall not exceed the minimum fixed by law. RPC, how do you get a maximum term? Uh, apply the rule of upsetting. Minimum term is one year, one degree lower than that imposed by the code. And the period of which is upon the discretion of the court. Hindi applicable ang rule of setting sa crimes punished under special penal law. No? So uh, just remember that no? the presence of any generic aggravating and ordinary mitigating will not affect the proper imposition of the penalty. Okay, I, uh, so hindi siya pwede mag-impose ng 12 years and one day kung uh, ang court kung ang violation is under comprehensive drugs act kasi wala siyang hindi nagset ng court ng minimum and maximum term of the indeterminate sentence which is mandated pan um pa, pagka ang penalty is single indivisible like reclusion perpetua you do not appreciate the presence of any ordinary mitigating or generic aggravating Okay. Let me just um mitigating two kinds ordinary and privilege. Aggravating um generic uh specific special inherent and qualifying now remember this the rule of upsetting is only applicable to ordinary and generic aggravating circumstances so ito lang dalawa do not apply the rule of upsetting as to this Two. When you say privilege, just lower it by one degree. Okay? Uh, qualifying it changes the nature of the crime. If the penalty is single, indivisible penalty, then uh, no, uh, no rule of upsetting. Walang lang rule of upsetting yan. So kung merong ordinary mitigating as generic aggravating, do not consider that. No? Pag two indivisible penalty, halimbawa uh, reclusion perpetua to death, 
ang pipiliin mo lang the higher penalty and the lower penalty. So kung merong mitigating, zero mitigating, zero aggravating, only the lower penalty, the lesser penalty. One mitigating, zero aggravating, the lesser penalty, which is reclusion perpetua. Zero mitigating, one aggravating, the higher penalty. And then the rule of offsetting. If this is a divisible penalty, it has minimum, medium, and maximum periods, then mitigating, aggravating, zero mitigating, zero aggravating, medium, one mitigating, zero aggravating, uh, minimum, zero mitigating, one aggravating, maximum, uh, two or more mitigating, zero aggravating, one degree lower. Tandaan niya na, two or more mitigating, zero aggravating, uh, then it's only, it's one degree lower. But this is not a privilege mitigating. Okay? So then you apply the rule of setting. Now this rule is of, uh, important to obtain the maximum term of the indeterminate sentence to crimes punished under the RPC. But we will not go into details as to computation. Hindi naman sinabi doon sa inyong bar syllabus. Okay, let's proceed. For special penal laws na. Okay. Probation law. All you need to do uh, for process of probation, rehabilitation, reformation. Okay. Prevent the commission of the crime. Anong uh, consequence? If the probationer violates the conditions of probation, uh, serve the sentence originally imposed. Sa islaw, pagka may violation ng islaw, uh, uh, ng, uh, ng parol, then it will serve the maximum term of his indeterminate sentence. Sa so probation, uh, serve, uh, serve niya yung sentence originally imposed. Disqualified sa probation, uh, hanggang 6 years lang yan. Ha? Pagka more than 6 years, more than prison correctional, uh, that means to say disqualified siya. So convicted of any crime against national security. Rebellion is a crime against public order. So pwede siya mag ng probation kung hindi nag exceed ang imprisonment of more than six years. Or those who are previously convicted by final judgment of an offense punished by imprisonment of more than six months and one day or a fine of 1,000. Okay, those who perfected an appeal from the judgment of conviction. O siya na convict ng drug trafficking or pushing or selling. Pero pagka drug use, uh, pwede siyang uh, mag-probation. Pag possession, pwede siyang mag- uh, pwede siya rin mag-probation. Ang hindi lang pwede drug trafficking. Uh, if the convict had already perfected an appeal, an application for probation cannot be granted. No application for probation shall be entertained or granted if the defendant is perfected an appeal from the judgment of conviction. Yon. By perfecting an appeal, petitioners uh, relinquish the alternative remedy of probation. Uh, the filing of the application for probation shall be deemed a waiver of the right to appeal. Okay. Probation may be granted whether this sentence imposes a term of imprisonment or a fine only. Yan. So exclude mutually exclusive remedy siya. So uh, effect ng probation, ano, a conviction becomes final when the accused applies for probation. Okay, I don't have to explain. Pero people call in Ares, uh, nagkamali ang RTC, uh, inimpose sa kanya frustrated homicide, more than six years. Ang inimpose ng RTC, inakyat sa Supreme Court, Supreme Court modified the decision to attempted homicide and the penalty imposed is two years. 
uh, four months. So what he did is to apply for probation. But this was opposed because sabi niya, you have a previous uh, uh, appeal. Supreme Court said, no, he, uh, he, uh, he can still avail of, of probation because it was really the fault of the RTC. No? Uh, and that doctrine in Colinares is now found in the provision of probation law. No application, section 4, no application for probation shall be entertained or granted if the defendant has perfected the appeal from the judgment of conviction. And provided that when a judgment of conviction imposing a non-probationable penalty is appealed or reviewed and such judgment is modified through the imposition of a probationable penalty, defendant shall be allowed to apply for probation based on the modified decision before such decision becomes final. Okay. So let's go to the Anti-Graph and Corrupt Practices Act who may be liable. Uh, public officers that na induce or cause the public official to commit the offense or private persons found acting in conspiracy with the public officers. Pag 3B, tandaan nyo lang sa 3B, yung uh, public officer in an official capacity under the law has the right to intervene. Pag wala siyang right to intervene uh, in an official capacity, lot liable under 3B. Okay? 3E, uh, tandaan nyo lang pag 3E, evident bad faith, uh, Manifest partiality, gross inexcusable negligence. Pag exercise niya ng tatlong ito, it cause undue injury to any, to any party, including the government, or gave unwarranted benefits. So either of these three uh, would already consummate the crime. So kaya nga, maybe charge either mood uh, or in other words, the presence of one would already suffice uh, for conviction. Okay. Uh, let's go to other mode 3G. Yung pag, pag 3G, entering into a contract which is... Uh, uh, grossly and must manifestly disadvantageous to the government. Uh, H is holding an interest which is against uh, the constitution or by law. So, tatandaan niyo yan. Comprehensive Drugs Act, illegal sale, uh, tandaan niyo lang ang elements ng illegal sale. No, illegal sale, proof that a transaction or sale took place. And presentation in court of corpus delicti. Uh, how do you prove transaction? Uh, identity of the buyer, seller, no? uh, and exchange of funds, ng drugs, and payment thereof. No? And then presentation in court of the corpus delicti or the illicit drug. Dapat yan, yung chain of custody observed. Illegal possession, kinakailangan lang is may possession ng item not authorized by law and that the accused was freely and consciously aware of being in possession of the drugs. This We lately explained this a while ago. Illegal possession of uh, uh, dangerous drugs, pagka nahuli siya ng possession of shabu at possession ng uh, ng marijuana, two cases should be filed against him. Pag sinabing ko, uh, possession, dapat may animus possidendi. So pag sinabing possession, can be actual or constructive. Pag constructive, nakita sa kotse mo, sa, sa bahay mo, it exists when the drug is under the dominion and control of the or the accused, or has the right to exercise dominion and control over the place where it is found. Okay, construct yon. Uh, if a person is found to be positive for the use of marijuana and then at the same time 
uh, possesses shabu, no nagpossession ng shabu, how many cases should be filed? Only one. No, uh, possession of shabu, the use of marijuana will be observed because the section 15 provides that it excludes penalties for the use of dangerous drugs when the person tested is also found in possession of such quantity of dangerous drugs. Train, uh, chain of custody, tatandaan nyo lang dito, is that uh, may mga link. No? Kailangan lang sa simula ay merong ano, um, um, sa simula no, from the suspect no, nakuha yung drugs and magkakaroon silang photographing inventory uh, it should be in the presence of an elected official representative now of the national prosecution office or the media hindi enda or the media na no tandaan nyo lang yon so strict compliance pagkatapos don sa suspect kinakailangan seizure marking photographing uh, as i've said no uh, with the presence of these people required, turn over the, of the illegal drugs to the apprehending officer, uh, from the apprehending officer to the investigating officer, from the investigating officers to the forensic or lab exam, from the forensic to the court. Make sure no, the, cor the court is satisfied that the drugs taken from the suspect is also the same as that they're also the same as presented in court. Tatandaan nyo yung pie, no, that, that uh, preservation of the integrity and evidentiary value of the items seized. No? <clears throat> okay, if you're not able to uh, provide the persons na this witnesses no or not be able to comply dapat explain nyo na based on justifiable grounds and that the integrity and evidentiary value of the seized items were properly preserved uh, pag di na pakita yung properly preserved the case will be dismissed no like uh, there's no physical inventory done in the presence of uh, the persons required under the law. Uh, proof of ownership of the dangerous drug is immaterial. What is important is that sub -pros adata, transportation uh, is that uh, the act of transporting as well as the identity and the credit integrity of deceased items. So again, a person convicted of either drug trafficking or pushing cannot avail of the benefits of probation. Now, it is important there is a positive, if a positive finding for the use of dangerous drug is found in the commission of the crime, it shall constitute as a qualifying aggravating circumstance in the commission of the crime. Okay. Violence against women and children, sinabi na natin kanina yan, but the victim here should be the wife, former wife, uh, or against a woman with whom the person has or had a sexual or dating relationship, or with whom he has a common child, or against her child, whether legitimate or illegitimate. No? So these are the types of uh, violence, physical, sexual, psychological, economic abuse. This is deemed to be a transitory or continuing crime according to Supreme Court decisions. For as long as you're suffering, uh, where you experience that, then you can file it in any of the city or municipality. Uh, thus, a person charged with a continuing or transitory crime may be validly tried in any municipality or territory where the offense was in part committed. No. You cannot issue a TPO, uh, Temporary Protection Order, in favor of a man against his wife kasi wala pa tayong violence against men and children. We discussed this lengthily, Battered Women's uh, Syndrome. You just memorize Section 26 of RA 9262. 
states that victim survivors who are found by the courts to be suffering from a battered women syndrome do not incur any criminal and civil liability notwithstanding the absence of any of the elements of this justifying circumstance of self-defense under the revised penal code. I emphasized that a while ago. Okay, we discussed already this tension building, etc. So we go on to the next point already. <clears throat> Abuses may be committed uh, through conspiracy. No? Uh, does RA 9262 criminalize criminalize marital infidelity? Uh, cr criminal ba ang marital infidelity? Uh, sabi ng Supreme Court, it has the occasion to explain. Now, what RA 9262 criminalizes is not the marital infidelity per se, but the psychological violence or suffering causing mental or emotional suffering on the wife. Or otherwise stated, it is the violence inflicted under the set circumstances that the law seeks to outlaw. Hmm. Martial infidelity, as cited, is only one of the various acts by which psychological violence may be committed. No? Thus, the mental or emotional suffering of the victim is an essential and distinct element in the commission of the crime. So, kung walang, kung may marital infidelity at wala namang emotional suffering, then walang liability. Kailangan merong mental, uh, emotional, psychological suffering brought about by this marital infidelity. Is coercive control a form of psychological abuse? Sabi ng Supreme Court, yes. Mm. It refers to act, uh, psychological violence, no? Uh, Act or mission causing or likely to cause mental or emotional suffering of the victim. Katulad ng intimidation, harassment, stalking, uh, damage to property, public ridicule, humiliation, repeated verbal abuse, and mental uh, infidelity. Okay, so this is a crime against public. It is a public offense. So, hindi private offense. So, so it can be filed by any citizen. Having personal knowledge of the circumstances involving the commission of the crime. Anti-fencing law, we discussed that lengthily kanina. Importante lang dito is the accused knows or should have known that said article, item, or anything of value has been derived from the proceeds of the crime of robbery or theft. Fencing is malum prohibitum. Da? We discussed that the difference between Theft, uh, uh, anti-fencing law from that of accessories. What is the presumption of fencing? If you are in possession of any good, article, item, object, or anything of value which has been the subject of robbery or thievery will constitute as prima facie evidence of fencing. Pagka ikaw ay buy and selling, kinalang kumuha ka ng to secure the necessary clearance or permit from the station nearest police station commander. Illegal possession of firearms, uh, dapat, what are the elements? Number one, existence of the subject firearm and ammunition. Pangalawa, now the fact that the accused who possess or own the same does not have the corresponding license for it. Pero hindi lang natit, uh, na, naka, nakatigil dyan, no? meron pang iba yan. Well, ownership is not essential. Ang, ang kinakailangan yung possession. Again, possession here is physical as well as constructive uh, possession. No? Animus possidendi or intention to possess. Para lang siya sa drugs. No? So aside from it is a sabi ko kanina, aside from a firearm without a license, what does a licensed firearm include? No, it includes firearms with expired license. Pag expired a license, unlicensed firearms pa rin ang considered dyan. Or an authorized use of licensed firearm in the commission of the crime. An authorized use of a licensed firearm. Kinuha mo yung licensed firearm ng brother mo, wala naman siyang alam na gagawin mo, kukunin mo para uh, to commit a crime.
So a licensed firearm, no, just remember, no longer simply means a firearm without license issued by lawful authority. It includes firearm with expired license and or the authorized use of licensed firearm in the commission of the crime. It is settled that the lack or absence of a license is an essential ingredient of the crime of illegal possession of firearms. Okay. Loose firearm. Uh, you have to remember this. Uh, uh, so loose firearm, no uh, use of loose firearm, the commission of a crime. The use of loose fire, loose firearm. What inherent in the commission of a crime, punishable under either the RPC or SPL, shall be considered as an aggravating circumstance. Tandaan nyo. The use of a loose firearm when inherent in the commission of the crime shall be considered as an aggravating circumstance. Child abuse law. So when you say a child is less than uh, 18 years of age, so 3B, uh, on psychological physical abuses, neglect, cruelty, sexual abuse, emotional maltreatment, or any deeds or words uh, which debases, uh, degrades, or demeans the intrinsic worth and dignity of a child as a human being. So, it, child abuse can be habitual or not. Even if single, ano, single lang na Act would already constitute as uh, child abuse. Okay, so for paragraph A, lahat yan, uh, ano yan, about prostitution, engages in promotion, facilitates, induces the child for prostitution, anything that relates to prostitution. No? Sa, sa section 5A yon. Section 5B, uh, ang ano lang dito is that uh, is a uh, act of sexual intercourse, lascivious conduct, or performed with a child exploited in prostitution or subjected to other sexual abuse. So 5B is when a child is subjected to other sexual abuse. Uh, so ano ibig sabihin nun? A child is deemed subjected to other sexual abuse when the child indulges in lascivious conduct under coercion or influence of any adult. In lascivious conduct, under coercion or influence of any uh, adult, there must be some form of compulsion equivalent to intimidation which subdues the free exercise of the offended party's free will. Okay? Each uh, incident of sexual intercourse, lascivious conduct uh, with the child is a separate and distinct offense. Okay? Pag sinabing consensual, no, sexual uh, intercourse, dapat gumamit ng persuasion, inducement, enticement, or coercion of the child uh, is present para maging liable yung culprit. Okay, ang, ang, ang rape ngayon, uh, statutory rape is already 16 years, di ba? Exempted kung sila ay may relationship at... Uh, it's not in an abusive uh, uh, relationship and also uh, not more than three years ang relationship nila. But if the age is, is six, uh, 13 and down, regardless of whether they are in a relationship or not, whether or not uh, the age difference is three years or not. Can rape instead be complex with violation of Section 7610? RA 7610, hindi kasi uh, 7610 is a uh, special penal law. Okay. Anti-torture act uh, who are persons liable uh, ito, meron siyang principal accomplices and accessories. Huh? Question, can torture as a crime absorb or be absorbed by any other crime? No, should be treated as independent crime under the law. Okay. Juvenile Justice and Welfare Act, uh, importante lang dyan ay 
age of the child which I discussed already a while ago sa inyo. So, mat- automatic suspension of a minor, yes, even beyond, even uh, kung at the time of the uh, conviction, he was uh, of age, if he's 18, 19, 20, 21, he's entitled to automatic suspension. If, but if his age is beyond 21 at that time where he was already convicted, he is not entitled to an um, automatic suspension of sentence. But he can already be uh, uh, referred to ag- to an agricu- agricultural camp. Agricultural camp na lang siya. Concept of status offenses. Any conduct not considered uh, not considered an offense or not penalized if committed by an adult shall not be committed shall not be considered as an offense and shall not be punished if committed by a child. So anti plunder law, malapit na tayong matapos ano? Uh, 50 million. Okay, and uh, uh, important lang doon. It being sufficient to establish beyond reasonable doubt a pattern of overt or criminal acts indicative of the overall unlawful scheme or conspiracy under Section 4. It shall not be necessary to prove each and every criminal act. Until Child Pornography Act of 2009, all you have to remember are those these things, no? All the prohibited acts, no, a child pornography, anything that relates to child pornography, no, publish, uh, uh, film distributors, theaters, uh, with involving child pornography, uh, for a parent or guardian, guardian having custody. And they uh, not only permit a child to engage in their in luring or grooming of a child, so into f- child pornography, no, uh, will be liable under this law. So, pagka ito, where there was a bar question which allowed children to be videotaped while simulating explicit activities, what is his criminal liability? That will be under this law. Anti-death penalty, the imposition of penalty, death penalty is prohibited. No? The penalty of reclusion perpetua. The, uh, the following shall be imposed in view of the death penalty. Reclusion perpetua, when the law violated, makes use of the nomenclature of penalties under the RPC. Life imprisonment if it is an SPL. Okay. Anti-piracy and anti-highway robbery. What circumstances qualify the same? Uh, in piracy, alam, uh, we discussed this uh, uh, kanina. No? If accompanied by rape, murder, homicide, no? and uh, the others. Highway robbery, physical injuries or other crimes are committed during or on the occasion of the commission of robbery or brigandage. If kidnapping for ransom, murder, or homicide, or rape is committed as, as a result of the occasion thereof. Okay. Uh, don't have. So, to convict a person of highway robbery, there is taking of the personal property of another, pro- the property of another. Second, there's violence against or intimidation or force upon things. Third, committed yan sa Philippine Highway. Fourth, all the accused were organized for the purpose of committing robbery indiscriminately. So the magic word of indiscriminately is present in this case. And not acts of a robbery committed against any predetermined person. Anti-hijacking law. Okay. Uh... Uh, it's, uh, it shall be unlawful to compel a change in the course or destination of an aircraft, no, or to seize or usurp the control while it is in flight. 
ta. Yan. Unlawful also to compel an aircraft of foreign registry to land in the Philippine territory or to seize or usurp the console while it is within the said territory. Circumstances which will qualify the same. Higher penalty, uh, pag gumamit siya ng uh, explosion, uh, na, na, nagbaril siya, accompanied by murder, homicide, serious physical injuries, or rape. Anti-carnapping, na sinabi na natin kanina, na without the latter's consent, or means of violence against, intimidation, or use of force upon things. Basta it involves a motor vehicle. Uh, So, hindi to kasama ang carnapping sa separate crime kung merong uh, iba pang nawalang mga bagay, mga pera because anti carnapping only involves the car and not those other things na. Okay. The new Anti-Carnapping Act, it only increases the penalty. No. Okay, next would be... Don't... Law on arson amended. We discussed arson lengthily a while ago. Okay. Okay, uh, and we also already discussed the same. Okay, um, sige. let me just uh, remind, um, ito na lang, no? last na lang. No? Um, pagka yung tao ay nag-underwent ng preventive imprisonment, detention pre uh, pre uh, prisoner siya, And he served already equal to or more than the possible maximum imprisonment of the offense charge. Dapat i-release na siya immediately. Tapos 36, pardon. A pardon shall not work the restoration of the right to hold public office or the right to suffrage. Kailangan ay expressly restored siya by the terms of the pardon. Pagdating sa subsidiary uh, penalty, tandaan nyo, hindi ito applicable. To civil liability, applicable lang dito sa non-payment of fine. No, Applicable when the penalty is fine uh, and it is applicable when it is expressly stated in the sentence. No, And one day for each equivalent to the highest minimum wage rate. No, And if the principal penalty imposed be prison correctional or arrest or fine, his subsidiary imprisonment shall not exceed one-third of the term of the sentence. And in no case, it shall continue for more than one year. No, pagka higher than prison correctional, no subsidiary imprisonment shall be imposed upon the culprit. Luma ba sa bar ito? No, okay. Three fold rule. Dapat ang and there must be at least four penalties. No, and the maximum duration of the sentence shall not be more than three times the length of time corresponding to the most severe penalty. Okay. Total extinction of the uh, criminal liability by the death of the convict as to personal penalties, as to pecuniary penalties, maraming lumalabas dito, it's extinguished only when the death uh, of the offender occurs before final judgment. It is a settled principle in criminal law that the death of the convict, whether before or after final judgment, extinguishes No, criminal liability. Pag, pero pag, pag ang iniusapan ay pecuniary liabilities, civil liability is, is extinguished only when death occurs before final judgment. So, if the offender dies after final judgment, ang pecuniary penalties niya are not extinguished. Not remember that. Remember also the uh, amnesty. No? From that of... Uh, uh, well, amnesty looks backward and abolishes and it puts into oblivion the defense the offense itself no so when uh, a person is released by way of amnesty 
stands before the law precisely as though he had not committed any offense. No? Pag pardon includes any crime. How do we distinguish a uh, pardon from absolute pardon? From amnesty, ang pardon includes any crime. Ang amnesty involves political offenses. Pardon is, is extended after conviction. Amnesty, hindi mo na kinakalangan na may conviction. No? Par, uh, pardon as a defense must be proved. In amnesty, the court must take judici- may take judicial notice of amnesty. Again, pardon looks forward and forgives punishment. Amnesty looks backward and abolishes the offense. No? So, tatandaan nyo, shall not work the restoration of the right to public office sa absolute pardon, pardon or suffrage. Kailangan expressly restored to by the terms of the contract. Uh, of the, yes, no? terms of the pardon. Okay? May mga lumabas dyan tungkol sa kung pwedeng siyang uh, tumakbo as, as a senator if amnesty or absolute pardon ang binigay sa kanila. Prescription of a crime, loss or forfeiture of the right of the state to prosecute the offender because of the lapse of time. Prescription of the penalty, inability of the state to execute the final judgment. No? Uh, question is novation a mode of extinguishing criminal liability? No. It is not a mode of extinguishing liability. It may bar only criminal prosecutor prosecution as long as it occurs prior to the filing of a criminal case in court. No? Computation of prescriptive period. Baka lang lamaba sa bar. It commences to, to run uh, upon discovery of any party, authorities, or agents. No? Uh, when does the period of prescription of a crime commence to run? It commences it commence to run from the day on which the crime is discovered. Pero pag alam naman ibang alam naman in public on the on the day on which it it is known to to everyone. No, kung alam naman kung hindi lang discovered kung ito ay concealed then upon discovery. Sino makaka discover dapat offended party. Offended party relates to doon sa mga uh, relatives ng uh, victim or the persons in authority or agents of persons in authority. No? So discovery rule ang tawag dyan, no? The general rule provides the period of, commence, uh, of prescription commences to run from the date of the commission of the crime if it is known at the time of its commission. Exception is when the crime is unknown or clandestinely committed, the period is to commence to run from the day on which the crime is discovered by the offended party, authorities, or agents. And lastly, if the offender is unknown, will it interrupt the running of the prescriptive period? No. The commencement of the period of prescription is not dependent on the identity of the same. With that, I end my lecture. I'm sorry that we extended so much, but I think I covered the same extensively. <laughs> Any question? Uh, All right. <laughs> Thank you very much, Din, um, Din Festin, for such a comprehensive lecture on criminal law. Again, we want to extend our heartfelt um, appreciation to you, Dean, because wow, for three hours, you have been refreshing and reviewing us with the most important legal concepts and jurisprudence in criminal law. So now we would like to open the floor for... Um, for our audience, especially to our law students and barristers in the Facebook Live for our Q&A portion. So you can use our FB Live comment section to input your questions so we can ask them directly to Dean Festin. And actually, Dean, meron na nga po tayo naman for the question. Um, it's from Belinda Magante. Ang question niya po is, regarding po sa admissibility ng drug by bus, None was mentioned regarding the mandatory body count of police personnel. 
sufficient na din po ba ang chain of command to convict the accused? Wala sa batas pa natin yung body kami. Eh. So we'll just follow strictly ko anong nakalagay sa batas, no? The presence of these people, no? Tapos uh uh photographing, inventory and marking of evidence, no? So y- kung ano lang muna ang ano natin, requirement under the law. Okay. Um, yung second question din is more on the extraterritoriality uh, principle regarding the policy. So um, we have cases na parang um, na-convict si husband because may mental anguish uh, on the side of, of the wife here in the Philippines na napatunayan. Ang question ko is, how do we um, prove yung mental anguish side on the part of the wife? Since it's more on the mental um, capacity or mental side, po. Uh, it, 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 it's already evidentiary in, in, in nature. You can get an expert witness, no? Pwede kang kumuha ng psychologist, no? That because of, you know, what happened, the discovery niya sa abroad uh, na merong marital infidelity, and then pagdating niya sa Pilipinas, she's already suffering from... Uh, psychologically or emotionally. You can get an expert witness and secondly, you can get also testimonies of witnesses who would really testify on the fact that you know, she was suffering uh, psychologically and emotionally as well. Um, third question din, uh, kasi sa SPL po natin, uh, meron tayong Kalyeha case which is about the constitutionality of anti-terror law, which is quite controversial, which is quite a controversial case also. But um, what do you think po, from your expert opinion, yung mga lalabas po na questions about the anti-terror law? Uh, ang lalabas lang sa anti-terror, kung ano lang yung uh, provision of the law, uh, I cannot surmise on anything beyond that kasi bago lang yung batas natin eh no. Uh, so kung bagong batas you just strictly uh, read uh, kung ano yung and uh, uh, provisions of the law itself. Mas safer tayo doon. All right. Um last two questions din um first would be what do you think are the ano ba? Most at hindi ako nag at hindi ako nagpe-predict ng bar. <laughs> <laughs> yes, pero um, sa tingin niyo po ba may mga uh, important topics, most important topics na siguro lalabas for taxation ay for uh, criminal law um, Sig- this 2023 bar. Kayo Kung po. ano lang ni lecture ko, stick muna do. <laughs> In addition, okay. yung pinag-aralan niyo plus yung lecture ko. Ulitin niyo yung lecture ko para ano Uh, it's it's I think it's comprehensive no medyo kapos lang ng oras but I think uh, marami na we have uh, discussed yung combination ng special penal laws uh, book 1 and book 2 in a particular case so cover na yon no and plus uh, yung sinabi ko about yung sa penalties yung mga uh, subsidiary penalty saka yung extinction of criminal liability baka sakali di ba um okay uh, so wala na po tayo questions din from our pals and rex fb page comment section so as a last question sa iyo din um any last minute tips and inspirational message for our baristas ah uh, o oh, una una is uh, you are just so near to your dream no uh, one week lang yan So um alagaan niyo yung ano take care of your health no uh, because it's uh, you know um and you take care of also your mental health as well physical and mental health no uh, and be confident no you're prepared well for this no uh, no one can tell really sabi mo insufficient no you can never tell there's no perfect way of preparing for the bar exam no uh, there are challenges that you meet but the thing is you need You, no, yung yung uh, fighting spirit mo. Don't ever ever give up. If that dream was planted by by God in your heart, you fight for your dream, and it will help you out. That's why I'm uh, keep on telling. Now you pray, and also sabi natin na if you stay close to God, you stay closer to your dream. And your friends, your family are outside the bar examination room. It's you and God. If you And they will uh, ask for grace, no? Uh, so they will cover, of, 
they will cover you throughout uh, your journey in this bar examination. And in December, I'm gonna show, I'm gonna uh, see you during uh, your oath taking no, at uh, SMX. And God bless everyone. Thank you very much, Dean Festine, for that inspirational message. As Dean Festine said, don't ever, ever give up. Just pray and believe na by the end of this year, magiging abogado na rin kayo, mga dear barristers. Magiging future panyero and panyera na rin ta- uh, kayo uh, this year. So before anything else, I... I would also like to remind everyone that kindly refrain from recording or reproducing our discussions today and lectures for any personal gain. Again, everyone can view anytime our lectures and discussions through the Pulse and Rex Education Facebook pages. Again, thank you everyone for attending today's discussion. Also, thank you to Pulse and Rex Education for this free initiative to our uh, 2023 Hernando Barristers. See you again tomorrow for our next three-week lecture on remedial law within Maui's. Goodbye, everyone.